Uh, one second, chat. Technical difficulties. <clears throat> my um, my microphone may be caught in something it's not supposed to be. Really good way to start a stream here. You can tell I'm prepared. And uh, Ethan Allen, thank you for the 37 months. <clears throat> All right, I think I fixed it. 38 months. Excuse me, I can't count. Jalter meme is dead indeed. Professional streamer, by the way. I mean, I'm kind of retired now, so. Hello. Cut me some slack here. Anyways, uh, yeah, I haven't streamed in a while because Tusk got sick, and of course he got me sick. Uh, thankfully, barely. Like, I only got kind of sick. Uh, but I I'm pretty much better today. Uh, almost back to normal, so. Yeah, it was only like two days of feeling kind of blech. Wasn't that bad. All right. I, I don't know about this design, chat. Uh, I feel like it is outrageously out of place in comparison to the other Hassans to the point where I don't really believe it. It's like, especially with, um, um, Fate Lost, right? Fate Lost has got an Hassan in it and they just look normal, right? And then you got Fate Strange Fake, which has an Hassan in it and they look normal. And then this guy just looks like really modern, I guess. And it's like, what the fuck? It, it's weird. I'm not, I'm not really about it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. So, Jolter got an animation update. Jono Art got an animation update. I haven't actually looked at them uh, yet, so we'll do that. Uh, Lost, do you have, uh, do you have Jolter slotted? Yeah, the Anted Antoinette Alter. And this new Hassan guy. Starting soon. I mean, you know, I haven't started the Singularity yet, alright? Now I have. Eh. Oh, my, um, my custom emotes aren't working. Again, they keep doing this. I got everything up to date. I've checked my extensions and everything. I can see them on OBS, but I can't see them in my actual chat. I don't get it. Well, I can see OBS well enough, so it's not that big of a deal, but, um... Yeah, AUs aren't cancelled, although watch them just going back to not doing them again. Because, like, Jolter and Joan of Arc are so popular, they kind of had to do them, and it was honestly weird how long it took them. But now that they're done, they might be like, okay, now we don't need to do them anymore. We'll see. We're in Japan, aren't we? Need to wait two years to be sure? Yeah. Japan dead. So, chat is, I kind of got this vibe from what like little I saw from promotional material. Is this like a fucking literal school grail war? No, I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> I don't know if I believe you. It's just a school, no grail war, Gladi. I don't know about that. Wait, is this seriously good as past, but like characters are replaced? Hi, Edmund. Uh, are characters replaced with the servants or something? You remember school, right? Actually, no. I never did the school thing. Yeah, Antoinette, uh, I haven't seen her ascensions yet. If someone's got her, by all means, slaughter. What the hell? Chad, I left my, my water in the kitchen. This is of utmost importance. I don't even know who, Chad, I don't even know who's crying. I care about the water more than the subscribers. Please that, Chad.
Okay, I am back. Let's see here. Uh, Alakazi, Alakaziz, I can never say your f fucking name. Um, thank you for the 20 months though. 20 months of me not being able to say the name. How mad was Chen? <laughs> what are you looking at, huh? Can't say any name right? That's not that's not correct. I can say green. I can say vert fire. Look at that. Alright, why are we back in the storm whatever? Storm box. That's the one. Look, you go by Ace and you know it, alright? So you can shut the fuck up. You ignored my 35 months. Wait, did I? Scrolling down here. Ethan Al. Oh shit, I did. Eight minutes ago. Look. You're a, you're a traitor to your name, so I don't have to respect you. All right. <laughs> uh. Blind and old. I mean, maybe the old part. A regular Antoinette. Chat, so Sanson's gonna get an animation update, right? Because there's all these French characters, right? Why are there a bunch of French characters if this is set in Japan, by the way? Wonder if they use Mozart, who is what, Austrian? I think we went over this last time. Viva La Japan, yeah. Next we'll see Leo we'll get an animation update. I mean, out of who's left, which is a lot of people, um, he does seem one of the more likely ones because he is actually popular. X Explorer, thank you for the 25 months. Look at that, look at this man with the capitalized E, right? And then lowercase, but then capital again to signify the word change. Look how, look how easy that is to read, chat. Very nice. I should take notes. <laughs> you did. So, what the hell is going on in the story, champ? Was all that like school stuff we saw at the beginning there a dream or something? Talking about famous counts. Well, surely they brought up Edmund. They kind of didn't. Didn't they like confirm in the prior, uh, like the event story that Edmund is not the count or something? At least our Edmund's not the count. Some people think they're gonna do with the whole like. You know, a new Edmund version or something. Of course, I don't want spoilers. From what I understand, Dantes sends himself to the future in the past to set up. Very confusing. That was a sentence. Um, I don't think it really matters if he's a real count or not. Like, that doesn't even make sense. Like, what's a king, right? A king is someone that just says they're a king that has the power to get away with it, right? Like, it, it doesn't, doesn't, none of that shit means anything. Like, um, actually, your bloodline, it's like, n no one cares. It has literally never mattered at any point. The king is someone that has the king trait, uh-huh. Hmm. 
wonder what they're gonna do about Joel. Oh, hi, Edmund. But I wonder what they're gonna do about Jolter's um, flag. I mean, in real life, I don't think Monte Cristo's real, but I'm gonna spoil this. The whole story's not real, chat. Although, actually, apparently, and there's, there is evidence to suggest this, that uh, the Count of Monte Cristo is based on a real story, but it's, um, how do you put it? It's romanticized, right? Like, Alexander Dumas did seem to have actually based it on a real story. And, like, the base stuff of someone being, like, wronged, then you know, coming into money and then using that for revenge does actually seem to be real, but, uh, you know, the names and the specifics and, and all that kind of stuff are absolutely not real. But, um, oh, it is a real place? I don't, I don't even know, but I'm, I, I'm pretty sure in the story, isn't it where he finds the, uh, the money? I don't mean in the fate story, you know, in the actual story, I mean. Well, yeah, I know is the, uh, you know, the old guy in the, the prison tells him about it. So what's, uh, what's Edmund going on about here? It's like the first time he's ever shown up to like the main cast here. It's normally just hanging out in our brain. I think uh, the Count of Monte Cristo, though, is, is from what I've seen, is definitely closer to the real events than the Trojan War is to what it's based on. But uh, it's for, the Trojan War is like very lightly inspired. Why is that Sage emote a crocodile? Crocodiles can be sad. I mean, haven't you heard of crocodile tears? But, uh, so why did Edmund show himself here? Was he like, not it, K peace? He met the count named Alexander. When he was alive, he says this guy could be that count. And have some, uh, life prolonging ability. Interesting. Look at Kiba knowing what's up. I wonder if Angra is going to get any... What's this? But I, I wonder if Angra is going to get any, like, mention or screen time. AU stands for alternate universe for animation updates are back. Yeah, pretty much. We had to jump timelines. Why was there blood there? I'm guessing they're gonna not have Edmund be alive for the rest of the story. That's kind of lame. Hey, it's the real MC. I'm pretty sure everyone would just be happier if the MC died and Cadillac took over. I'm just saying.
Yeah, I hope the animation update stuff isn't a one-off. It might be, though, just because Jolter's that popular. I'd like to point out they really should have done her animation update with the um, Remnant collab, especially if they were planning on doing it anyway. But they're so bad at fucking time management. Cadox Bizarre Adventure. Why would anyone, like, give a fuck about self-insert ship because they're not actual characters? Like, god damn it, dude. So dumb. Also, it doesn't even make sense, right? Because it's like designed to be head cannon, so you, you can't have all of the ships cannon at once, right? This doesn't work that way. None of that shit makes any sense. You <laughs> underestimate my power. <laughs> Yeah, I could just never understand, chat. I know, where's my Gilles de Rays animation update? Yeah, sulfur inserts are so boring. They're just really poorly written. Wasn't expecting that. How he get here? He already met us in a future singularity. Like what? So it hasn't happened for us, but it has for him because Throne of Heroes. I wonder if... Uh... Huh. That's kind of weird. Maybe he lying. I mean, he's an assassin. I don't know. He's kind of my least favorite Hassan design by a mile. It just looks so out of place with the other Hassans. Like, uh, imagine, like, back during, like, Fate, uh, Fate Apoc, or even Fate Stay Night, right? And you, you look at, like, those early Hassans, like, you know, Fate, let's go Fate Zero, right? So you got Zero Hassan and Fate Stay Night Hassan, right? And then you're like, okay, guys, in the future, you're gonna have this Hassan here from Prototype, right? You're gonna have this Hassan here from Fate Strange Fake. And uh, you're gonna have this King Hassan guy, right? It's like, yeah, these all make sense. And then this guy, it's like, no, no, that's that's fan fiction. Like, it's so fucking out of place. Like, it's ridiculous. Imagine this just showing up in Fate Zero, right? It's just so goddamn out of place. Serenity, I don't really like that much, but she still fits in fine. You know, she's supposed to be more like more, I guess, graceful looking, but she still fits in with the vibe. It's got nothing to do with being revealing. I mean, fucking Curse Arm is wearing less than all of them. Like, Jesus. Like, they, they, all the Hassans don't wear a lot, which, I mean, makes sense considering they're, you know, from uh, the desert, uh, I'll put it that way. But um, it, it's not really it being revealing. It just looks weird. It's way too modern. This looks like some, like, VTuber shit. None of the other ones look like that at all. At least the one in Fate Lost, though, is pretty normal looking, so... Hell, that- that- the one in Fate Lost might be the one from Camelot that Tristan yeeted. If you look at his neck, you can tell Gramps agreed with his fellow old man. Yeah, it does kind of look that way, doesn't it? I'm guessing there's more to the story, though. It's not like an Hassan is just going to be on our side preemptively and that not be some bullshit. I 
I, I know people really do want the spoon, Hassan. They'll probably do it at some point. Like, you don't show that randomly without having actually, like, thought it through. It was pretty whack. Actually, most Fate stuff doesn't look all that normal um, in the older days of Fate. They, I mean, look at Medea. I mean, she's not, like, modernized at all. Uh, Saber wasn't, right? Um, they didn't really start doing that until later. And I don't really mind it when it's, like, A, Ascension, because all the servants always have, like, clothing for, like, blending in, right? Like, they have, like, modern clothes that they just wear that are actual clothes and stuff like that. That's fine. I don't mind an ascension being that way. But when they make, like, all three ascensions really, like, modern for, like, no... Literally no reason, it's just like, what the fuck? It's just kind of weird. Anyway, now, a fate has always been fantasy, though, right? It's never been, like, realistic. Uh, it's always been, you know, anime. And that's fine. I'm not, I'm not caring, like, oh my god, that... Dude, sword is too big. That's uh, uh, that's not realistic. The the weight ratio, um, you know that that's not an issue here. Yeah, Tommy Boy is pretty pretty normal. Uh, they, it's not like every design's not grounded, and, and it really is, it's because they have different artists. That's the thing. Uh, I think a lot of the artists are trying to stand out, like straight up. They're trying to stand out from the crowd. And some of the artists are like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta do this character justice, right? So I think there's just different kind of takes on, on these things. Like, Fate lost almost all the designs, although anime are, are quite grounded and are pretty reasonable anime interpretations of what they're based on. And, and that's kind of a reoccurring theme with everything in Fate Lost, right? Uh, like all the flashback Nordic characters and stuff. Yeah, they're not historically accurate, but they're still pretty grounded and like they feel authentic to especially the anime vibe um, Where there's other artists that you know, they just go so off the walls But yeah back when it was fate stay night fate zero and I would say even apoc like the early character material work for it Everything was pretty grounded. Um, I'm trying to think if uh, of those original three, and then Fate Extra came out like right after. Uh, Fate Extra though was trying to be a bit different because it's like very different setting and all that. Uh, you know, more spacey and whatnot. But yeah, for APOC, Fate Zero, Fate Stay Night. Because you gotta remember the, the old version of APOC, you know, was actually way before the, the books and stuff. Um, what's the most like modern? Really, none of them are all that modern. I guess maybe Medusa kind of? Right, um, and you got like Emiya, but like Emiya supposed. Oh, you know, actually, you know, it's Ku. Yeah, a actually, it's Ku. But everyone thought Ku looked terrible. I mean, I, I love Ku, but my God, his design is, uh, not that great. But yeah, Ku is probably the most, uh, out there design. Now, I really stand by this. I don't think they were trying to make Ku look modern. I think they were trying to like reference like body paint and all that kind of stuff. Uh, from like a lot of old Celtic and you know Irish stuff. Uh, I really do think that's what they were going for, but it does it doesn't look good. And I, I don't I don't even know if that's like modern. It's just weird. Um, but yeah, nothing's like really normal. I would say in early Fate. I mean, let me think. Fate Zero. Yeah, no, everything in Fate Zero I'd say is pretty grounded. You know, it's anime, but it's still pretty grounded. Um, yeah, Cookie Killer, I swear to God, <laughs> I think you did do this the other day. But thank you anyway, dude. Thank you for the 38 months. Let's see. I mean, I like Ku's, like, you know, the shoulder pads and, like, the silver's cool. And he's got cool hair and all that. But, uh, I don't know. I'm not crazy about the spandex look. But, uh, to each their own. But uh, even that, though, like I said, is not super modern. When did they, let's see, when did they really start doing a more modern look? Um, I guess maybe one of the earlier ones is actually Arthur. Now, his original design is different than what we have now, and his original design was very normal for Fate back then. But he had the hoodie. But it was, it's kind of just the hoodie. The rest of it's pretty normal. That, that's, that's something kind of modern. Um, what's maybe earlier than that? 
Let's see. So what's the release order here? So it's Fate Stay Night, Fate Zero, APOC, like the canceled stuff. And then I think Extra. What happened after Extra? And like what, anything modern and Extra. It's, Extra is more like spacey, right? It's not exactly modern. Let me think, chat, what is after Extra? Why, what, why? Fuck, it might be Fate Strange Fake, weirdly enough, because it um, it took them so long to get working on that. I think it might have been, like, Fate Strange Fake and then regular APOC. Like, the book APOC. And then I think it was F-Go, wasn't it? I mean, Fate Labyrinth is in there somewhere, but that uh, that only had, like, for new characters, uh, like, a Stereos and stuff. It didn't, it didn't actually have um, much. So honestly, I think this, I think the more like modern, like the, the very common, like modern designs, actually, I think start in F go, which, I mean, I believe that. The thing is, I don't think you really want to be noteworthy necessarily. I think if you try to be noteworthy to be noteworthy, you end up looking like a VTuber, right? The reason why a lot of fade extra designs, I don't think Lily, you may not stand out to you is because they actually make sense, right? They're not like flashy to be flashy. They're, they're, like, they're again, they're kind of sticking to the, the origin of the stories, but then making them a bit anime, which I think, you know, I definitely prefer. And I think a lot of people actually prefer that, but it depends. Um, yeah, Kentoki definitely, uh, cause he had a design in APOC. Uh, that one was definitely out there. That's, that's like the first one I can think of. I just, here's the thing though. I suspect that look for Kentoki that they showed in the character material book was Kentoki being influenced by the era that he was summoned in. And like, it's kind of like how Gilgamesh gets casual clothes. I kind of suspect that's what they were showing. And then they just made that his canon look, period. Right, which is kind of weird, but I, I, I hard to say because we didn't have that much information back then. But it was definitely rare. I, th I think it's F go. I think F go is really where it, it started. And especially the frequency, right? But it kind of bothers me because people are always say it's like, oh, fate's always been this way. It absolutely fucking lootly has not. Now, fate's always been fantasy. Like, uh, you know, they've never been like super realistic, but uh, yeah, no, they, they, this, the whole like modern spam is definitely not normal. I mean, I didn't like Ziggard's design because it's modernized, and I still feel that way. Uh, I like Ziggard regardless. Uh, and again, he's kind of like Koo, or like, you know, his actual, you know, like, character himself looks fine, but then the, the clothes are kind of like, what the fuck? Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I've always been in that camp of I don't really like the modern stuff there. Yep, same for William Tell. Uh, again, love the character though, but... I'm really in the camp that by all means give them an ascension that's more modern. Like how Gil's got his modern clothes and Artoria's got her modern clothes and stuff. But don't make all three ascensions like that. I, that's... And I think that's a really fair compromise. What, what, am, I, what am I looking at right now? Is that Lobo's blue flame? I don't think so. Fire hand? Alright, let's see here, champ. Any, uh... Okay, there's Jonah Arc. She's got an animation update. Why are they banned? Are they banning Avengers? They're banning Avengers. Yeah, that's fun. Imagine, you know, giving an animation update to the most popular Avenger in the game. And then you're like, by the way, you can't use Avengers. So what am I going to use? Jonah Arc on a Berserker stage? Like, that's not exactly the, the most logical thing here. Hey, look, she's actually, like, not super short anymore. Imagine that. Wait, don't I just have my own Jonah Arc? One second. 
Although, uh, I might need to bring a team just because she'll get her ass whooped here. Cairo, don't, don't you have, like, school to do or something? Let's see. So, no Jolter animation. Oh, there is a Jolter animation update, but we can't see it here. Um... Oh yeah, she has a costume. I guess this actually doesn't look like complete ass now. I mean, it, the, the dress still looks ridiculous, but this looks so bad before. Like, I could not believe how bad this looked with her old sprite when they made that. Crazy she didn't get an animation update back then. All right, we'll just go with the second one. It's like the, the default here. All right, we're gonna need to bring someone else to carry our ass. Uh, you know, cool will work. I'll bring some people for Bond. Do I still not have this limit broken? That's crazy. I need a reason to roll, man. Yeah, I, uh, I tint and tint Jolter. Cause I, I, believe me, I did not forget that I said that. We've been saying that for years. So, uh, yeah, I didn't forget. Haven't actually used her yet. Um, and I put her on like a team and then I didn't actually do anything uh, yet, so one day. I I'm too lazy to give them craft essences. I mean, what if this is actually hard though? I mean, first stage, I kind of doubt it. I would love a roguelike in FCO, man. Maybe someday. Here's the thing. If they did a roguelike right now, it would suck because they just cannot... Their, their workflow is so bad. They, they would never be able to put out... And I mean this. Right now, with the state of the company, they are incapable of putting out a roguelike of the quality of FGO while maintaining, like, regular releases for events and whatnot. They can't do it. It's clearly beyond them. This is indeed a hand. Okay, I actually hope this thing can crit and stuff. I want to see its animations. Okay, we've got attack down. Just... Eat that. Kind of dramatic music right now, all things considered. All right, let's see these animations. I have a feeling they're going to phone these in, but... Well, not too bad. Did she just hit it like a baseball bat? What the hell? She's been summoned too long, chat. She needs to go home. No point in slow mowing this one, this one art card here. She's probably got a triple art though. That's kind of cool. I mean, she looks pretty stiff, though. I'm not going to lie. You kind of tell they're not reanimating her body much. Um, you know, some, some fun melee smack smack, but yeah, she does look stiff. I don't even... I got she's just what? Is that supposed to be her Is that supposed to be her other NP? Cause she's got a I swear that's like referencing her other NP, dude. I I I I I swear they did that on purpose. Where they're like they want you to kinda of get the vibes of when she kills herself. Bro, what the hell? It's kinda of like Koo does like, like a pseudo death flight. What the fuck, man? That could not have been a coincidence. That was so strange. This thing's got a big damage resist, apparently. We kind of need to solo, though, so we can see triple art. Yeah, she's stiff as hell. Holy fuck, that, that really showed that they can't be bothered to animate. 
Dude, that makes me worried about Jolter too, because like, man, they basically have a static pose and they're just paper macheing at 100%. That's, uh, that's concerning. This is probably not a servant, you know, it's not. Please don't kill her this turn. Jolters is way better, we'll see. Yeah, dude, that's so stiff, man. They do reanimate her chest, like, from the complete side uh, a little bit. Not often, though, but her legs and arms, I don't think they're reanimating. Animation updates were like this, though, towards the end of them doing them before, so I can't say I'm surprised. I like how Ku still has PFA. Um, let's do the extra here to try to do close range buster. It's still better than it was though, chat. Whew. Yeah, I, it's definitely not the best animation update I've ever seen, but I mean, I'll take it. Like, it's certainly better than it was before, but yeah, it's a little disappointing. Not Killagilla tier. I mean, that's kind of what you expect. Yeah, it's not maybe not the best close up I ever saw, but I don't know what else you can really do with that NP. Dude, I swear they're referencing her other NP with that. <laughs> I swear to God, dude. But what she's actually doing is she's like, oh, hey, here we go. But uh, I swear she's like using a flashlight to like blind them and then running away. And it's like, I'm gone. It's, like, it's a magic trick, guys. Look, look, I, I vanished. All right. Uh, well, we're, we can't really see her. Her uh, triple art because I never got the triple art and it's unlikely that I will so I should probably just coup NP but look at these proto coup animations chat they're so good hey he got him Yeah, at least the cut in, uh, uh, that's true, the cut. You know, that's probably why they're so lazy though, is because they kind of had to do that because it's old characters. They couldn't really get away with changing their uh, ascension art. That's probably why it's kind of phoned in. I, honestly though, it's not just that. It's because they don't make money off of them. So they just, they don't put the same level of effort into it. Uh, although honestly, new five stars have been kind of phoned in too recently. So I think it's just a workflow thing in general. I go. Uh, we'll see. I haven't seen uh, Antoinette yet. Does anybody have her? Nope, oh, Edmund again. Do we know what the hand is, chat? Like, lore-wise? And, like, where are we? Like, were people, like, not kidding when they said this is the MC's past? Like, surely that's not real. I have her, but she's not maxed. Well, if we can just see the animations, that should be fine. But the better, the higher, the, the better, right? Higher level, the better. She takes OC2 exclusive mats. Oh boy. This is 2015, and this is where the MC used to live. Wow, so this really is kind of like it's a singularity or whatever based on like right before you joined Chaldea. So clearly, Jalter was uh, was in your past, right, guys? I wonder if they're gonna make that a costume. They are so lazy with costumes, even when they're basic. I wouldn't really expect it. Chad, how long does it take to get to use Avengers? because we might need to do a, a stage outside of the story real quick. 
We want to see um, Galter. It's almost a Jerker. That's the other one. Not too long. Okay, we'll just wait then. Chat, she's not wearing the tie correctly. What a rebel. How daring. There's a lot of costume possibilities. Well, that sounds like a lot of reasons for them not to, uh, not to do any of them. Is that, um, is that Ricky Boy Manfricardo? I think it is. I don't know who the fuck this is. I can't really tell. Oh, that's, um, what's, what's their name? You know, Green Hill Zone Slow Down. That's the one. Bob, yeah, that's the one, Bob. So do they have their memories and stuff? Or, or like, what's what's the deal here? Are they like trying to blend in? Or is it like they've been summoned here? What's what's the shtick? Finally got an animation update after 3,000 years. I know, right? Like crazy that they didn't do that sooner. But thank you for the uh, nine months, dude. I appreciate it. They don't have their memories. They think they're regular students. Okay, so it's some weird shit. Oh god, this is like a fan fiction chat. I love that dog arrived, dude. Chat seems to really uh like that one. Yeah, we're not too tend to anymore, chat. Can you believe that? After all these years. I feel bad for the dog too though. It normally is a sign of a bad owner. Like not uh, feeding their dog correctly and exercising and stuff. We've already seen the school uniform. What are you doing game? Jesus, get that shit out of here. By the way, the red does not look good on this. I'm, I'm just saying, the red should be black or just more of the purple. I, I don't know why red is used this way. There's always like get ups where there's already a bunch of colors and they're like now slap red on it. Red is better when there's less colors, Jesus Christ. Looks fine, it does not. Like if it was black or purple, it would look way better. All right, nope, no combat yet. So yeah, are they standing in for people, I guess? I'm guessing Mash has her memories. Oh, I don't know, maybe not. Oh no, it's the devil himself. The so Mash doesn't have her memories either. Let me guess, she's standing in for some idiot character that called you senpai anyway. I love this song, dude. This is such a good song. I've said it before, but man, the fact that the composer passed away, like, not even that far after putting out the soundtrack is just so sad, dude. Like, Guy is such great music. And then like Larian blew up, you know, after the fact, right? When like he was their music guy. He made so much great stuff for them, but then he like passed away before seeing all their success. That's so messed up. Yeah, this is really fanfic -y. Oh my god, I hate everything about this. Yeah, can we- where's Kodamine? Just finish the job, man. Leaving this shit half done. Don't- don't you- don't you shocked face that. We fucking respect Kodamine in this house, thank you very much.
See, no, no. Get Kodamine right the hell now. It's right now. Get it done. How the hell does this work? It will be interesting if Kodamine is in this story. So is this happening in our brain? I'm so confused. Why is one of the trials, like for normal his human history, wanting to accept? I don't understand. How the fuck is a trial for normal human history trying to accept extra classes taking place in your fucking brain in the past? Like, what does that have to do with Avengers? Like the Angra class, by the way. We're playing Persona, apparently. Like, wouldn't this make more sense if it pertained to Angra and like why he exists? Why, why don't we, wait a minute. Why can't we get a, a main story set when Angra was alive? That's a God tier setting, by the way. And that would give you so much opportunity for unique servants and stuff. Holy fuck, we've been robbed, chat. How is that not what you do to like flush out the like Avengers? God damn it, man. I'm pissed now. Gil save us. Yeah, just A of the city, get it over with. We'll kill who's ever responsible. I'm sure normal human history will be real happy with that. Look, are you telling me that they wouldn't find some ridiculous way to put Jolter in a school uniform in Angra's time? Because I'm pretty sure they could figure that one out. Like, it never stopped them before. I hope we see Ort again, even if it's like way down the line or in Fate Strange Fake, or in the finale of, of a 2.0 here or something. I hope we can at least get something more. We'll see. Who wrote this one, by the way? Do we know? <laughs> this music for Da Vinci at home. What the hell? And also, Da Vinci at home is actually Da Vinci and FGO. I'm just saying. It was actually I who wrote it, uh-huh. I love that picture of Ort with the sombrero. It's great. Intense high school music, yep. Chat, do y'all want some Fate Strange fake spoilers? The the most recent volume isn't like that translated right now, but there's some interesting information. You might uh, just I, I guess most people want to talk about it for a second, so mute and then I will I'll say I'll type in chat or I'll have chat type in chat or whatever when uh when when it's over. But anyway, so you know, Gil's been foobard for a while, and you know, we had guessed that his master was going to give him the potion of youth or something, but um, she gives him half of it. So he doesn't go like full kid mode, but he goes like teenager mode because of that. And for some reason, this turns him into an alter ego. Like it's, it's like if he never met Enkidu or something. I guess it's because he's younger, so it, it would have been the time frame that he hadn't met Enkidu yet. But then because he's already summoned in that body and everything, it's like, so it makes a version of him that like lived through his whole life. 
that never met in Kido or something. And yeah, now he's an alter ego. But his powers are like the same, but he doesn't have Aya or Chains of Heaven. So he's actually just like weaker, but because I, I guess he's just like meaner, he, he takes things more seriously. So even though he doesn't have Aya or Chains of Heaven, he's like really dangerous just because he's like not holding back so much. But yeah, it's like Teenage Gill, which is basically uh, Fate Stay Night Gill, though. Like, Fate Stay Night Gill is Teenager Gill, essentially. Because he took the full potion of youth, but then 10 years went by. So he's younger in Fate Stay Night. So he, it, I think he's still slightly younger than that, though. But yeah, so there's Alter Ego Gill that uses Gate of Babylon very seriously. So he, like, pulls out the crazy OP shit. Uh, but yeah, no AM. But yeah, so yeah, Alter Ego Gill is definitely getting added to... Uh, F go at some point. Okay, you can unmute now. What the fuck? Is that Mozart? That has to be Mozart. Now that I see the uh this, this has to be Mozart. They're not gonna make they're not gonna give him an animation update chat. It's not gonna happen. Is he their music teacher? There's no, there's no Mozart animation update here, Chad. Is there? Let's tell. I would, someone would have said that by now if that was a thing. The caster balls are forever. Oh, this is a really weird story. Fire extinguisher, though. Does she have her memories, chat? Does, like, does anybody know what's, like, any of the servants actually know? So they're all just school idiots right now, is what I'm getting out of this. Jesus Christ, I didn't need to see that. Oh, that's Bodica. <laughs> what the fuck? What about the front-facing thing? Just made that really bizarre. But yeah, it's Bodica. What's with the cat? That's like when, uh, what's his name? Daybit had the, the stare, stare thing. So no animation update for uh, any of these people. I mean, she's pretty clothed in her, her uh, stage two and three, let's be fair. I don't think anyone even uses stage one Bodica. I think like overwhelmingly people don't use that one. I was expecting to die of old age before Jolter animation update. I still haven't used it because you're not allowed to use Avengers yet. So, well, and we haven't seen Antoinette yet either. And yes, this is main story. As as odd as that is. Oh, God, it's awful. Chat, I stand by that this Hassan does not fit in with the rest of them. Like, if they designed all the Hassans back in Fate Zero or Fate Stay Night, they would not have made him look this way. Like, don't kid yourself. Shinji. I'm guessing he's got his memories, because, like, he's been weird this whole time, like, with him being summoned early and all that. He's probably just undercover or something. God, who wrote this, dude? <laughs> I don't understand. Chat, they're doing this before the finale. Imagine if this was going on, like the equivalent of this, after Babylonia, but before Solomon, right? It's just crazy. Like, what are you doing? Like, if this was after the finale, I don't think anyone would mind. Like, right, right? Then you'd be like, oh, that's a fun little side thing, right? But the fact that it's right before the finale just blows, dude. I know, it went from Ort to this. Can we just summon Ort in this reality? Just back there, just have him start running up in the background? I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Let's have another boss fight with Ort. It'll be great. I mean, Tiamat, you can do Tiamat too, you know, that's fine. 
you know, Abzu, you know, that, that'd be good. We're never gonna get Abzu, by the way. Yeah, this music really goes. This original Fate State Now, but yeah, way back in the day, Fate State Night OST. And uh, yeah, really fitting here. I really do think though, with them giving us Tiamat the way that they did, like in Arcade and just her getting some screen time like that, they're not gonna really revisit that stuff again, I don't think, and, he, and so I don't think we're gonna get Abzu. I'd be, I'd be very surprised if they used any more of that stuff. We know, we know why it's called OC. Yeah, I know, right? It has been pretty fitting. I just like them hyping up the one story set in Egypt and then they had no Egyptian characters. That was great. Really liked that part. So I wonder if they want you to think this is regular Antoinette and it's actually the altar one. I guess we'll see. We'll probably use both. Because they're using regular Jonah Arc and Jalter, I think. Or are they, though? Maybe they're not. Yeah, I know. The first OC had no impact on every in anything. They didn't really hint at any of the overarching story. Everyone forgot everything. It was so fucking pointless. Okay, we can do another stage now. They'll probably do a follow-up to OC1, though. I suspect there'll be an event down the road that is kind of an extension on it. They do that a lot, and uh, I, I really could see them doing that. School fight? <laughs> what? So you're telling me Ordeal Call is Epic of Remnant 2.0? It's more like Epic of Remnant 0.5. I'm gonna be honest. I, I very much do think, like someone just said in chat, I think OC is way more filler than Epic of Remnant was. Because Epic of Remnant is more like an epilogue with some like side story elements, right? But it is wrapping up some of the, the stuff of 1.0. It's not really necessary. It's kind of a side story based on like some of the ending leftovers. But, and it's also after the finale, right? So they're not really stalling anything. Where this is very much stalling and it's not wrapping up shit. They're contriving new things we've never heard of to be dealt with, right? Like, oh, uh, human history, blah, 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 extra classes, something, something. Like, it's just nonsense. I don't think stakes matter too much though. I actually think always needing things to have high stakes can be a real problem in ongoing stories. I really stand by this. I actually think that runs ongoing stories is them constantly trying to raise the stakes more and more, right? And it gets to the point of absurdity. And it also makes it really hard to just have some normal fucking, you know, character interactions when every story has to be world ending. It honestly gets dumb as shit. Right? All you really need with stakes-wise can be, a, you know, personal stake or character growth and things like that. Not, and not every goddamn story needs to be the, uh, you know, uh, Armageddon um, apocalypse, right? It doesn't always have to be that. Um, however, you know, these OCs basically just have nothing going on at all. So, just because I said not everything needs to be super high stakes doesn't mean you need to do pull an OC where it's like there's literally no point to this at all, right? They actually said the vi the villains after Ort are not going to be stronger than him. They just straight up said that in an interview. They were pretty straightforward about it. Um, but I, I don't even mean that. You know, I don't I don't necessarily mean you know power scaling. Now anime has that problem too. But I just mean the fact that like every everything behind it has got to have some c catastrophe going on, right? Like you don't really need that. You can make a compelling story um, without it. Not everything has to be that big of a deal. The thing is, you don't if you don't have a compelling story or characters and stuff, and there's no stakes, then people generally just don't give a shit. Oh, here we go again. So yeah, I'm guessing he's like undercover and just pretending to blend in. 
I wonder, we probably get him as a story support. Okay, we could check his stuff out then if we don't have um, Avengers yet. Yeah, we don't. That's fine. But he's a four star. At least they kept him as an assassin. Pretty shit at blending in. Well, it is fate. Uh, why dogs, though? <laughs> Did he, like, corrupt, like, wild dogs on the street or something? I wonder if this is a lingering evade. I'm gonna guess that it is, but I'll wait to use it. Nice opening hand here. Chat, check out these St. George animations that are actually pretty cool, so. A little loud. Draining my NP every turn. So I guess this thing, man, they're really on about these like ongoing gimmicks, man. But everything's gonna have damage resist, I suppose. Probably to varying degrees. Yeah, that one's D, that one's E. George is still alive. Yeah, his design's pretty whack. That's kind of cool, though. He's a magical girl. I don't know about that. Come on, guys. You got to actually attack at some point. This is ridiculous. I have triple NP drain. And I, I guess I art chain here to try to get my NP with all this drain. We're kind of doomed here. A song from Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, that's about right. That really is a, a, a good uh, analogy, actually. That is kind of what he reminds me of. Like, you could see this guy whipping out a dual disc. Like, imagine this guy next to Curse Arm. Like, yeah, we're, we're the same. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're similar, right? All right, let's see the NP. What the hell was that pose? Something on quick attack. When he's got an art NP, alright. Alright, let's see what he's got. Can we ban pants like those? I agree. Oh, he is a magical girl. Chat, do his animations look stiff as fuck to you? Because they definitely look stiff as fuck to me. He does seem like a true name. I'm very confused by this. Oh, he's AOE, huh? I just can't imagine all the other Hassans, you know, coming up with their special techniques. And then he comes up with that. And it's like, yeah, this is normal. This just like reeks of it being made way later by a different artist. And like, it's just, it just does not ring true to me. Hey, Beastly. Assassin, by the way, yeah, I know, right? Boy, this thing's got a hell of a lot of damage resist. Uh, have we done Buster first? I think we have. I should do triple quick, though, just because it might have a special animation.
That just does not animate it well. That, that extra is kind of cool though. I, I mean, I don't hate him, but I don't love him, and he doesn't. I don't think he fits in very well. Like, I do not believe for one second that if, you know, back in Fate Zero or Fate Stay Night, if they had just sat down and designed all the Hassans at once, one of them would have looked like this. I, do, I don't fucking think so. I like how he throws 20 knives and hits three times. Well, you know. I know, I'm trying to sneak into an enemy fortress and this guy's making like sparkles everywhere. Like, what the shit? I wonder if I just have to kill the ads. Man, I think I like Serenity more than him, chat. I mean, I'll have to read his bio and all that, but... The Serenity's character is where she really fails. Yeah, this might be my least favorite Asan. Also, his animations are just not, like, the extra's all right, but the rest of them are just so stiff, man. It's really been f -go lately. Let's not die here. Shame I didn't loop. If I'd actually tried to have looped, I probably would have. I might kill it here. Yeah, I think he's got it. Yeah, I guess when you kill that one, the other ones die. I'm guessing it really is like affecting like random dogs or something in the area. He's a Pokemon. <laughs> I'm sure somebody likes the character. Yeah, I, I said you could unmute quite a while ago. Yeah, I literally typed it in chat. All right, well, we still got to see Antoinette and Jolter. Yeah, that sucks, dude, if you're muted that entire time. My apologies. Can't wait for the next AU in two years. That's also stiff as hell. Chat, the music today has been really off. I'm just saying. It's like, although I, I guess it's because the story is so uh, abnormal here. Sorry, I had to turn a uh, heater off there. Good old hat in time. stuff Okay, we're fighting an Avenger
Takes so long to get into a stage, man. What is this? Wait, is this actually gonna be like Persona where shit gets wild at night? Oh no, this is actually gonna be Persona, isn't it? The dark hour. The thing is, regular fate, the, you know, the servants don't normally do a lot in the day, just not to be found out, but it's not like they ha it's, there's nothing special happens at night. It's just the optimal time to not be noticed. Or this looks like there's something actually specific, like magical happening at night. Boy says, just like the prism tower, you'll have to face seven trials. Interesting. Guessing the trials happen every night. It's a Gundam? Oh. Yeah, it kinda is. Random Brito Mart. I was a lot more accurate about that than I thought I was going to be. Wait, are they awesome? What the fuck? Was that before? Memory? Oh, is this Mamo Brita Mart? So the singularity is literally in your head. Like, we weren't kidding about that. So if this is the mom, I wonder if that means she's normally an Avenger. Boss fight, perhaps? Can we see Jolter's animations yet? Nope! Man, they're gonna make us wait a while, huh? Uh, what class is Antoinette, chat? I swear to God, she's probably an Avenger, huh? Which would mean we still can't see her animations either. Great. This isn't, okay, well. Weird marketing over here. What's something fun we could use on this account? It's always Bazette or something. Kodamine. Does he have Anti-Avenger? We got uh, Lost right here. No, yeah, no, wait a minute. He's a... Uh, he's a... Uh, alter Ego, so he'll get Omega wrecked uh, with these guys here. Use another Gundam. That I can... What the fuck? We could use uh, Tomomoto. He'd be kind of bad on this stage, though. There's uh, 
Odysseus. That's a thing. Makes no sense here, but I'm doing it anyway. There's Lancer, though, of fucking course. He's kind of hard to use in a team setting uh, for an account like this, anyway. The team presets messed up. Well, we got um, a waiver, but I don't really use the five star supports. Shakespeare, it's not great. I mean, there's Zhu Fu for the battery. Oh, they really need to buff the budget support options, though, in my opinion. Like, they cannot support a character like Baldi or. Uh, Orion very well, and they can't support quick period because that makes sense Hmm Man, I want to play armored core now Although I kind of always want to play armored core Hmm. Not great options here. I mean, there's always Pence. That's actually good, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Alright. If we get anything for Armored Core 6, it would definitely be after Elden Ring. So it's going to be a minute. Also, I don't think they had any specific plans for Armored Core if you look at their interviews because they weren't sure it was going to be a success. Now, it was a, a success. So now I think we will see more Armored Core, but I don't think they had anything in like pre-production. Interesting. What are their names? Double damage resist and defense up. We aren't going to do any damage here. This is a reskin of Camelot Knight. So probably new, no, no new animations on this guy. Hmm. It's pointless to use the battery here because I'm going to get my NP anyway. But I also would like to not die. How did anybody like why did someone even say ape for the giveaway oh ace combat that's awfully specific yeah i think the playlist is looping it has a tendency of doing that all right uh well we're doing absolutely no damage so this is not a real fight i have a feeling Why do they do this so often? Just a waste of your time. Like, just do it, do it in the cutscene. Don't waste my goddamn time. Like, if I fight a boss, I want to actually fight a boss, for fuck's sakes. So, 
you can do damage with like covering fire and divinity and stuff. Wait a minute. I think you could actually break this bar then. Especially if you could stop her from casting this. You could dot her up. Yeah, I think you actually can break this bar. Um, like a uh, doorman or something like that. You could probably do it. Yeah, the damage we're doing right now is from Divinity. She has an invisible debuff immune. That's so lame. I'm guessing you tried it then. That's so... They just... Man, remember when you used to be able to have fun in this game? Oh my god, dude. It's so lame about that stuff. Cause like, you used to be able to, like when bosses you weren't supposed to beat, you could still like get a lot done. And so like even, it used to give you rewards. Like if you beat the 2 million HP in Kidu, you got a chain, which obviously is not that great, but they, they at least, you know, like acknowledged you could do it. So lame, dude. So the best you could do on damage here actually is Angra then, I think. The Angra with a bunch of like things to support him that also happen to have divinity and like covering fire and stuff like that. Lame. Oh yeah, Avengers are banned. Right, you can't use Angra. Oh my god. So you'd want to bring the six servants with the highest divinity stat, all with covering fire. That's the best you could do. And get a brave chain every single turn. You get the extra attack to apply it. You bring the command code that does flat a thousand damage. On your unit and your friend's unit, because that'd be four total. I doubt that'd be enough. I think you could get maybe halfway. You don't have that many turns. Yeah, you could also bring, uh, you could use like the Switch Mystic Code and stuff. Um, and you could have, uh, Waver. Now, you wouldn't want him to stay on the field because he doesn't have Divinity, but he could give the damage plus to the people that do have it. Can I Avenger yet? Oh my god, I just want to see the animation update! What is wrong with this game, dude? So, are we not fighting her again? Because now it's Berserker. Any Davids? Okay, yeah, there's a 70 David. Max check? Any Maxes in chat? Oh, well, there's a Gundam. Zero pugs, by the way, like non friendsless people, so they're all bots. Seventy again. Um, all bots again as well. Amazing. I know, we can fight doors to see the AU. Ridiculous. Might just take a regular David. But a grailed one would be really cool here. Look at that Robin Hood, though. Fuck it. like how that text is saying something, but I have no idea what. Probably no Avengers. You know someone out there has zero Avengers and they're like, I can't read. Let's see here. Oh, there's our David. Maybe Jufu.
I have a feeling this is not a boss fight. They're like allergic to those these days. Eh, stars aren't bad for Robin. Really good CE right here, chat. You know, there's a lot of star bomb CEs in the game, and especially support characters that maybe you don't care too much about their NP, or if you're cycling them or something. Star bomb is just a really good CE for them. And, you know, they give out a lot of star bomb CEs, like normally one or two a year. But this one's really nice because it comes with starting NP, so you can get all the benefits that I just said about like not really caring if you get your NP or not and still being like a good support. But then you also can get their NP while doing all that other stuff. Because if they're a support, you don't really need damage on them, so you don't need like art up or anything like that. So it's, uh, it's pretty good, chat. Definitely worth using. Maybe we incorporate that into a team next time you do a challenge quest, chat. No problem. Yeah, I, I think I used it in Tesla Fest 2, actually. It's been a while, though. Wrap it up, bucko. Maybe she turns into a berserker here. You're I wonder, not that guy, pal. Trust I wonder me. if they're You're going to guy. um if they're gonna remember that Avenger is just a derivative of Berserker ultimately. Cool visor sound. You, like mash stumble upon the battlefield here I think she ran away Okay, this is taking a minute. Man, I wonder if um, there's going to be any hidden stuff, like if there's any time gates or anything, if they do like a buff or a costume or something that we don't know about yet. Be cool if he got another buff. Got some odd music today. Yeah, secret AU like Shimosa. Are we just fighting one of these again? Also, what the hell? I guess these are like the Counts boys. Need a hand. Oh, God. Can you imagine if it said that? Yeah, they do look like they're from Helsing, except they've got swords instead of guns. And Warhammer, that's pretty fitting, too. Wolfenstein. My guess is, though, they're minions of the Count. They have double damage resist, but this only has one damage resist. Wonder what that says. Uh, well, might as well debuff them. You know what? I'm gonna take the NP gain here.
Every buff ever. Hmm. 40 stars, 80%. Could be better. Thought about doing Mozart's, but I'll do that next turn. This might not be overkill because of the damage resist. Okay, no, he's dead. I suspect that damage resist, though, is probably like 20 to 30%. Double dedge. Chat, do you think that the reason they gave the Camelot Knights the animation update was because they were planning on making these guys anyway, and these guys were being worked on behind the scenes, and they were like, we should at least give them like better particle effects, and like, hey, we might as well apply these to the Camelot Knights as well. Yeah, I actually think that is what happened. That, that actually explains like how random that was. Uh, might as well try to kill this one because it's got all the buffs. Let's see if David can kill. He doesn't have a lot of buffs, so... Eh, close. I hate that, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Alright, let's... Oh, I don't have, uh, why do I have this equipped? What do I do? What? Where's my poison command codes at? I don't know what past screen was doing, but, uh, that's kind of weird. Did I use, oh wait, no, that's not my Robin. That's right, this is a friend's Robin. So, uh, they must have been doing something with Bodica. Actually, that's not, that's not even crazy because Bodica's an art support. And it actually is really good these days. So yeah, I mean, I normally put on Bodica herself, but there's, it's not really wrong to put it on Robin. Yeah, that makes sense. Legit, uh, Bodica on this team would have been better than David. As long as we got the, uh, the command code. But if like I had it on my Bodica, and then you had it on your Robin, that's really legit. Fuck, I need to summon your Robin more than on my main account, because then I could give my Bodica the the anti-Roman thing, or the Roman apply thing. So then there's two things that apply it. It's way better. It's actually super good. Yeah, I mean, Bodica actually started to become kind of uh, viable for budget before the Roman man code. But then when you add that in, then she's just really viable. Like, she's super good now. Uh, Urzer, thank you for the 38 months. It's such a long time. Uh, I guess these. I don't know who the hell needs them, but I have so few. Alt account stuff. This is obviously not my main. I don't think I need to explain that. Yeah, having it on art and then like the CC on a different one is totally fine. Yeah, Bodoka has been pretty fun to use lately, actually. Uh, can I use Avengers yet? Chat, I'm just gonna do a stage outside of the story real quick. This is ridiculous. Like, it'd be satisfying to do it. Like, hey, you have Avengers now, but fuck it. Like, this is, like, come on. You can use her soon. I'm fine. God damn it, Ace. Undetected. Uh, we gotta see Antoinette as well. You know what? We do it again. Unfortunately, this account doesn't have a setup Bodica like my main does. Oh, well, that's a thing. Sure, try that out. Um...
It's fine. I like how the only command code I have equipped right now is the poison one. I've got another poison one. I should probably put that on. Shakespeare really does need a animation update and a buff. Maybe make his battery team wide or give him an attack up that he can give somebody. All right, let's see. Six of these boys. Guess I'm using both of these. She's pretty fun to use, though. It's a shame this stage looks kind of easy. You know what? I think I'm going to fire everything here. Kind of scuffed on um, stars, but it should be fine. I should have given him star bomb. Impress me, let's go. You have so many buffs. Oh baby, a triple. I think, we'll see. Yeah, that one's definitely dead. They have double uh, damage resist, though. Yeah, the, the non-crit didn't kill, but extra got it. Nice. Pretty good. We used a lot of our gas there, though. Damn. All right. Man, I need more star gen with her crit thing. I didn't really set up for that. Man, where's my David animation update? And you got Proto Ku, freaking um, what's her name? Bob. Yeah, that's that's the one. Matahari. Proto Who, yeah, I know, right? It's been the joke for a while. Obviously Shakespeare. Mozart. Darius. Leonidas. Asterios. And, uh... Sanson, god damn it, I want a Sanson animation update. I'd say Billy counts now too. He doesn't need it as much as like the day one people, but he could certainly use one. Romulus, yeah. I like how most of my like favorite characters from the original cast don't have animation updates. When I got into FGO, I remember I was really interested and, and cared about getting Ku, which by the way was the first summon I ever had in my tutorial summon, which is Boom Ku, so that was great. But uh, Ku, Darius, Billy, um, and then like when I saw him in, uh, in Orleans, I really wanted Sanson. I thought Sanson was like... I remember Sanson has always been really special for me because he was the first character in FGO that I did not know about that wasn't in like Fate Stay Night or any of that other stuff back then. That I was like, oh, he's cool, right? So he was like the first FGO specific thing that I like discovered and thought was cool, right? And, uh, but yeah, Ku is the only one that got an animation update. And it's such an old animation update. Barely counts. No Darius, no Billy, no, uh, no Sanson update. Leo is really high on my list too, though. And Mozart Shakespeare. I'm trying to remember when I got into FGO, 
I'm trying to remember if I had read APOC yet or not. As it took me a while to get around to actually just sitting down and reading the damn thing. And I remember I never really liked Mordred that much until I read APOC. Uh, and unfortunately this isn't in the anime, but what well, kind of is. But when I read her flashback, which is so much more detailed in the, the book, that's when I was like, okay, Mordred's actually a pretty cool character. But yeah, I remember before that I was like, eh, save her face, whatever. Now, I already knew about Jekyll and Hyde from Prototype, Blue Fragments. Obviously, they're a bit different over here, but... Do you have Karna now, though? I'm pretty sure you do. I think I've seen your support list. You gotta understand, though, back then... Every saber was a saber face for one reason or another, right? So you had Fate Stay Night, obviously it's saber. And then Fate Zero, it's saber again. Um, and then you had um, Extra, which was around the same time as the canceled APOC. But then Extra was Nero, but back then... I, I, I gotta show this just to for the, the five people in chat that have never seen this. Because Nero's design over time, they've just slowly changed. Like any longtime Nero fans will know this. Like over time with each game and you know, FGO, all these things, they kind of just slowly kept changing her design a little bit, changing her design a little bit, changing her design a little bit. But Nero in the in Fate Extra on the PSP, right? They're her first outing. She just straight up looked like this the entire time. Right? And, uh, yeah, this is her first canonical appearance, right? And, and Fate Extra is where she has the most screen time and is, uh, like, where they really, you know, really get into her character and all that, right? And, yeah, she's just Artoria again. <laughs> it's just, so you, you gotta remember, you had Saber and Fate, Fate Zero, uh, you know, after Fate's the Night, which was obviously Saber. And then you have Fate Extra, and it, it's it, this is just Saber again, right? And then you look at Apoc, the canceled version, and you got Mordred who looks like fucking Saber, but on a bad hair day. And then there's this Siegfried guy, but the, if even in the character material book, they like told you that Siegfried died immediately, right? So it's like, oh shit, look at this Siegfried guy. It's a different Saber, it's a guy. This is all, oh, he's dead. And then, and then the, the Saber face is the one that's in it the entire time. It's just like eye roll, right? That's, that's exactly how I felt about Mordred back in the day. It's right, all these fucking uh, sabers are all magically look like Saber, right? Or Toria. And then there's finally another one, and he just dies instantly. And then the rest of the story, it's uh, another Saber face, right? So I was just so eye roll about it. So I didn't I didn't really give Mordred a chance for uh, quite a while. But uh, ended up being a pretty good character, so. Why are the underwater? You know, extra things. Let's see, when did we finally get a story with this? Because Siegfried, you know, doesn't get much screen time. You have Zig, but that doesn't really count. When did we actually get a canonical saber? That's like in the story and doing shit in a major capacity. The proper saber, no weird stuff like Zig. Um, is it Fate Strange Fake? I think that's so messed up. How is it not until Fate Strange Fake? That is insane. You know what's whack is because FGO doesn't really count because it's like a video game and, you know, there's not normal Grail War stuff anyway. We we still don't really have stories with sabers that aren't Artoria other than Fate Strange Fake. What the shit, dude? That is messed up. Gwen doesn't really count, though, because that's like Siegfried uh, again, because the saber is Nero, really. And uh, Gwen doesn't get much screen time. That, that, that's very akin to Siegfried, I would say. Requiem is after Fate Strange Fake. And also, that is such a bizarre setting. There's, uh, there's like 5 billion of every class, so... And the Saber's not really the main character. They're kind of side character, but... Yeah. And now, Richard's not really a main character either, because Fate Strange Fake doesn't exactly have a main character. But he's as prominent as any character can be in Fate Strange Fake. So that's about as close as we're getting. 
So, wow, we don't really have, though, a story that the Saber's a main character that's not Artoria. What is going on here? Is this our Edmund? Oh, shit. Okay, I guess she's back to herself now. Jolter and Antonio from Chaldea have been brought into Singularity. Taking over their NPC versions, okay. What happened to Edmund? Dude, he's so awesome. I actually, I'm really looking forward to seeing some of his dialogue here. Now we can use Avengers, okay. I mean, Remnant is also, you know, a video game. Also, some people say that Sabres are uh, Artoria phase. You know, it's kind of 50-50 on that one, but... Uh, I, don't, I don't think that really counts. Look at that awesome fashion. Hey, Zaw. We're, up, we're finally about to use her animation update because they don't let you use Avengers at the start of this. But I think we got it here. He's so cool, but he's so bad, unfortunately. Okay, um, I actually, actually really awesome to use Antonio here, but we got to show off the animation update. Like fucking Christ. You want to see if we could look at like the costume and stuff, but you can't go to their profile. We'll do that next. Uh, this team will be fine. Most likely. Took almost two hours to show Jalter. In, in our defense, or the game's defense, I did waste a lot of time talking. Chad, I almost blurted out that Phase Strange fake spoiler again. So, uh, Darth Vader is Luke's father. No way. What the fuck, man? Okay, it's just these guys again. That's kind of silly. Well, her sprite certainly looks better. Like, oh my god, she had like the bobble head. Like, so bad uh, before. She had one of the worst cases of bobblehead. Uh, he still got it, but the jacket hides it a bit. Unfortunately, I cannot NP here. Well. Might as well do the attack up. You know what? We'll do the crit up. Oh, I have a feeling her animations are going to be stiff as hell, but we shall see here. You know, let's go quick first just to see the animation and then do quick after first next time we see it. She can fly. Okay, that's pretty much the same. Well, that's cool. They seem to be kind of Edmonding it, where they're kind of keeping the animations from before, but instead of doing repeat animations, then there's new ones. It's a little disappointing because I don't think her original animations were that, like, inspired, but, uh... I do like the flame, though. Like, that one flame, like, double smack at close range looks pretty good. Alright, NP time. We still need to do close range quick here. She just did like the uh, Lelouch thing there. Should not have sped that up. That was a mistake.
Pokemon? Does anyone remember? That's like a Shouter version, but you might be able to get an idea. I don't know if she NPs there, though. Man, I am so, um, curious now. Chat, I didn't watch her animations there. I have no idea what the animation we just saw was. I wasn't paying attention. I think it's the Avenger one shit. But yeah, I totally missed uh, the animations on that last turn. I was looking at chat. Time to make a new account? Might be. It's really easy to get to, so... You definitely fight Ruler Jolter a few times now and then. We have definitely not seen all of Jolter's animations here, though. The teammates are getting a lot of the cards. Damage. Unfortunately, he probably dead here. Kiara account, yeah, right. Yeah, I like that one. That one's good. I, they are probably better than regular Jonah arcs, but she still feels pretty stiff. You can kind of tell there's not wanting her to move fluidly, so they just do a lot of particle effects and that kind of thing. They don't want to animate her. But it's still better, I would say. She's in a free quest. Which one? Oh, you're right, but that's a shadow one. I don't know if in Orleans. Does that one do the NP? Well, let's go find out. Yeah, I'm actually super curious about this. That's a face. So I'm guessing now that we've got the Avengers, we can fight uh, Riddle Mart. More hands. I'm assuming those hands are connected to the count, and so are these guys. All right, let's go, uh, I guess it's saying Avengers get a, a bonus. You know they're gonna make the final boss. Some nonsense where that's relevant. Like that you want the bonus damage. Hopefully she does the NP. That does not look like... Man, if she didn't get the update, that's like the first time they've done that. And it's because... It's probably because they just could not be fucking asked. That's so dumb. Because like, uh... Li they, li they put a lot of effort into Lion King. Because, uh, she got a... The boss only NP sprite. Right? Like, they, they actually gave a fuck with that one. Be very hard to get rid of my taunt walls here. 999. Nine, nine. I could slot mine, uh, but it's, it's such an easy stage, who cares? Wait, do I have his passive? I think I do. Yes, okay. Scatty Sing, pretty appropriate for this one. Oh, I got the costume. Looks way better now, which I think that's, uh... Kind of to be expected, all things considered. Thank God, the costumes on Jolther and regular Jonah Arc were such a mess before. Um... Fuck it. I was thinking about trying to not kill one of these so the attack three times, but... 
Wait, why didn't I just Chen Gong NP? Because then they could have been attacking Chin here. Silly me. I'm assuming the flag just appears out of nowhere here. They're way too lazy to do custom animations for a costume. Especially these days. Damn, he might have actually killed them. We're never going to see the quick attack. Oh wait, no, no, they're alive. We need to see double art too, and then like uh, Buster Buster, then an uh, art instead of quick first. That animation is so out of place though. Damn, does she just have the one? Oh wait, no, it's because we were at long range. We have to do an attack, we're actually close. Probably Buster Buster quick. He actually has a lot of long range stuff. Why does she stomp the ground and then the explosion is up top? That doesn't even make sense. I am confused. The extra attack looks pretty cool though. Can they kill Chin Gong? Let's keep that one alive because it probably hits the hardest. Wait, I don't think I've seen double art. I should have kept it. In slow mo. It's gonna be impossible to keep the boss alive, but we'll know if they got the animation update immediately. Alright, just some close range smack smack. I mean, it's an okay animation update, but it is pretty stiff, like with her arm movements and stuff. You can tell they're not reanimating, like, her, uh, her body much, so it's not the most fluid. Um... I guess, like, uh, Buster Art Art. Oh yeah, I guess we could do QAA. That'll keep us at long range. It must be random, because the last time when she was close, she did the second melee. So yeah, I think it's just random. Like, it's okay. Like, this animation update is okay, but it... it you know, it is very um, typical of, like, the l newer stuff in FGO, where it's definitely a bit lazier and stiffer. Yeah, this this is no um wow she doesn't have the animation update i don't think yeah no she's just uh that's crazy that's the first time they've done that yeah it's not like karna's animation update or um caligula's right it's not that good i wonder if the opening quick is random or if it's always the no nah, i think I, it's probably always the long range that animation looks pretty bad i'm not gonna lie but yeah, that's just, that's really stiff, man. Okay, we're doing too much damage. Oh god. Oh yeah, that's definitely. Oh man, that's so silly because she's like one of the first major bosses you fight, and she's just gonna look like dog shit. It's weird that they put in the effort into Lion King, getting a, like a unique NP sprite and everything. But I, I guess they just put more effort into it back then. Uh, alright, last one. Um, maybe, uh, the classic here. Do a rainbow chain. Back in my day. I think the opening buster is random as well. Shame she doesn't have a close range extra.
Oh, I wasn't paying attention to the skill animations, chip. That's uh, fine. I'm sure we'll use it more later. All right, now we just need Antoinette. I figure there's no point in me making a Jolter animation update video, though, because people must have made like a million of those the second it dropped, but I'll, I'll make like a solo with her or something. If there's actual boss fights in the story, that is. I might be kind of slow with the videos right now, though. Um, because Tusk got sick and then I got a little sick, I'm really behind on real life stuff, so I got a lot to do. We will get around to it, though. All right, any Antoinette havers? Oh, no, nothing serious. Just, you know, keeping up with the typical real life stuff. Just gotta take a few days to catch up. And I'm moving soon, so there's that. If we had a story replay, I probably would go fight Mothman again, but... Uh, Alright, so Antoinette is a... Avenger. I haven't seen anybody with her so far, though. Shit, anybody? Any An An Antoinette fans? I, I thought she'd be kind of popular, but, uh, uh oh. Shit. I mean, if someone just got like a level 51, that'd be good enough. We might need to go do a easier stage if that's the case though, but I'm not, not seeing any here. Doesn't help that you don't get randoms anymore. It's all bots. That makes it so much harder. You know, some crazy bastards got through the story as fast as possible. Is it time locked any chat? Does anyone know? Because if it's not time locked, you can already farm the stuff. If it is time locked, then you probably can't. Wow, not a single Antoinette here. Crazy. This is what happens, uh, like, there's not a single random player here. So if no one of my friends list has it, like, just nothing changes, because it's just bots over and over again. Oh, there's a couple of people here that aren't bots. No, Antoinette. I actually don't know what her art looks like, though, so... Gotta be careful. Damn. And this, this used to never be a problem, but now it's always a problem. I'll take 50 over nothing. Mainly just want to see the animations here. Hold on, you probably, um, well, it's my alt account, so uh, maybe, my, yeah, my list is not full. How about that? Make a little bit of room just to be safe, though. Uh, no, this is not Tales of. This is, um, I think it's Yeast. YS. Which is kind of a similar vibe. I gotta tell, though, I, I don't know how to put it, but this is a bit, like, I don't know, like, deeper uh, than most Tales of songs. They're a bit more, like, higher pitched, I think. Like, it's similar, but I can definitely tell it's not Tales. Her third ascension is different animations. Oh god, that's gonna be so difficult. 
Because basically no one uh, has their third ascended, it sounds like. He's probably in the story at some point. Man, we just cannot get this, dude. Yeah, the 120 thing does kind of make people, I think, roll on things they kind of kind of care about less. Also, the game is just less popular, right? There's, I think, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, most of the people these days that are going to have a new thing are, just, are pretty much just the whales, and uh, I don't really attract the whales for obvious reasons. Dude, one player that's not a bot. Like, one player that's not a bot. That is so ridiculous. Let's see. We should probably do an easier stage if we're level 15. I don't think NA will ever get as much of a bot invasion just because it's the less popular server. The thing is, there's been bots forever. It's, it's, I think it's just people have gotten even better at making bots and then there's less players to dilute them. So it's just become more and more obvious over here. I guess, uh, unironically, we do a door stage here. He's only level 50 though. Fuck, these are the worst stages ever though to kill George. Okay, maybe we do like this. He might need to re-log. Uh, by the way, otherwise you're probably not gonna pop up And you'd think sending someone an invite would automatically re-log you, but it does not. Wow, we actually got a Like three people there. This is the same person, but we got three people that no wait, we only got two Damn Wait, what, what, what's the unique animation? You have to fight Gilles de Rays? That's so specific. Why would they? They've like never done that before. What the hell? Is that actually a thing, chat? Is it like her extra attack or something? I'm sure there's, um... Yeah, there's Gilles de Rays as a shadow servant in uh, Orleans. Her close quick is unique. Really? They've never done that before. Uh, I'll do that next. That is so whack. Oh, there we go. There she is. So I guess we can only see her stage one then. Which I'm guessing is going to be like school shit. What the fuck? Oh, there we go. That sucks, chat. That's like nothing like she looked before. Why are her shoes glowing? <laughs> what the fuck? That's so specific. But uh, that really blows because uh, I suspect like the kind of like black dress look from before is an ascension, but this is just like nothing like uh, she was in the story before. Yeah, if you've got a higher level one, send me uh, an invite and I'll look at that in a minute. We need to see stage three, because people were saying the animations are different. All right, let's see this though. Nani? Wait, are those, is that like, I thought that was like magic. Like maybe she kicks people, but uh, is that like literally just her shoes like glowing? Is that, is that Zoomer stuff? Because if it's like, you know, like a time bomb, that'd be kind of cool, but I'm guessing that's not actually the case, so. Guess we, uh, Chin Gong here. We'll, uh, we'll double quick. 
We gotta see this, um... Special Joan of Arc animation, though. That's so specific. I'm guessing she's Antoinette, but bratty from her voice line there. Oh, that's cool. She gets like shadow horse compared to the uh, the normal one. I actually like when their altars are actually, you know, like similar to their original self because it makes sense. Instead of just being like completely different skill set. Oh god, we're so weak. Oh my god, we're so weak, dude. That's a little creepy. Uh, she's probably AoE because this game... Like, dude, this game, there's just no way she's single target. This game hates making single target characters now. Uh, we'll do, uh, opener buster then. I can't stand how much AoE there is now. Well, she does kick at least, so there's some logic here. That, that, dude, it always looks so bad when they do that though, because they can't animate the fucking, like, character. They have them, like, go way above the target and just kind of, like, keep their legs at the same distance that they normally are. It looks so bad when they do that, and they do that all the time. Oh, no. Okay, she's not dead. <laughs> she's like, oh, shit. That's so strange, though, that she doesn't actually kill herself there. Yeah, it's stage 3 in P, obviously. But yeah, I thought she was going to uh, eat herself there. Yeah, the thing is like kicking in real life like proper fluid body movement involves like your shoulders and your hips moving a lot and that normally would require you to redraw the sprite and so it is very common they don't want to do that so a lot of kicking in fgo looks terrible very good Oh god, we might be dead. <laughs> so we're probably gonna lose this stage. I could, uh, I could see us though. We'll see. Might as well make stars here. We've seen that horse animation so many times. I think we still need the close range buster. Man, I hate how often they do the four stage three thing. Just this, like, so they don't have to animate as many sprites. Chat, she literally needs to have a, a, a passive that makes it so Sanson gets his third skill on her. They, they really should do that. Oh, that was not intentional. <laughs> that was absolutely not intentional. It's just a coincidence. I have the worst mystic code for this right now. Um, I really want to see not open your buster, but I need to get my NP as well. But fuck it. We're about to die to the original. So far, her animations kind of suck. That's probably the best one. Yeah, we're so dead. God, that's such a terrible animation, dude. That's exactly what I'm talking about with kicking, though. Or they just don't want to fucking animate anything. God, Bodica's animations are so bad.
Jesus. Everything right now, though, feels very Bodica-like with the way they're animating it. I just, I remember when Bodica's animation update came out, it came with Caligula's, and his is so good, and then hers is so bad, and like, Ushis was right before that, and Ushis was really good. But, uh, yeah, Bodica's was so low effort. So I could CS here and get full health, and maybe we could win, but, um, yeah, probably not. Let's see if we can see the third stage here. I'm glad AUs are back, but they're pretty damn lazy right now. We kind of knew that was going to be the case, though, because they've been so lazy with even new characters. Of course, they were going to be... Oh, fuck. The person probably didn't get their invite through. A bunch of other people sent stuff. Uh, we'll see. No, I don't think they got... Uh, they're going to have to send it again, I think. Make as much room as possible here. Ren worst scroll, by the way. Gonna make somebody mad with that one. This motherfucker! Um, yeah, there's my code again. Um, you only got five slots, so good luck. Rad. Um, actually, if you read the visual novel. We'll, um, we'll check out that special Joan of Arc animation here, which I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that's a thing with like how lazy they are with these, but, uh, we'll see. I mean, I like Taiga unironically more than all of the main heroines of Fates Day Night, so there is that. And then Medea is better than all of them, so. Sakura's, like, persona where she acts all, like, wifey is awful. I cannot stand that at all. I don't really like Sakura, but she's a more interesting character. Then Rin is. Rin is so fuck. I I fucking hate Rin, dude. Every word out of her mouth is illogical garbage. And there's that scene where she's saying being a mage is more important than being a father. And I'm like, just jump off a bridge, thanks. And then uh, you know she uh, she's like the worst type of Sundari, where it's like she actually assaults Shiro multiple times. Right, like in the school, she's actually trying to like beat the shit out of him, right? And she's being an idiot. She's like, oh, you shouldn't stay at school after hours while I do the exact same thing. And then Medusa literally would have killed Rin because Rin can't take her own advice, right? And then fucking Shiro has to bail her ass out, right? That would have been so awesome, by the way, if they would have just let Medusa have that, right? And just like headshot Rin there. That would have been so good. That, that would have just been 10 out of 10 best story ever. No more fucking Ren, it'd be great. Alright, um, we need Jonah Arc. This account has it though, so I can just summon a taunt. Nice and easy. Alright, where is the flag lady? In here somewhere. There she is. Alright, I'm so. I guess I want to lower my damage. So, um, no attack stat. Yeah, this is going to be so sad looking at Jonah Arc with like a health stat CE. Uh, maybe like a guts or something. Like called the lifesaver or whatever it's called. That'd be a good one. I know I have it. I just don't know where it is. I don't know what this is, but it does uh, attack. So that's no good. There's that old gut CE with Nightingale that I'm thinking of. I know I've got it, but on this account, no clue what level it would be. Fuck. There's this, but then you get the big attack up. And the taunt. You know what? We just go no CE, because I can't find what I- Okay, here we go. Perfect. Master, thank you for the 28 months, man. No, the Kanith. The Kanith. Thing gives you flat damage, okay? We can't have that. 
It looks like we got some Antoinettes here. I'll check that in a minute. We need stage three though, because people were saying the animations were different over there. All right, let me actually see her normal quick so I'd even know what's different here. Why quick? If I was going to give her a special animation, I'd make it the NP, the extra, or like the buster, or the art or something. It's so strange that they did um, quick of all things. Did you guys say it needed to be close range quick? Super specific, dude. Dude, that is so stiff. Oh my god, it's so bad. Holy hell. Oh, dude, you can't. Oh my god, that's bad. Like, that is just so shit, dude. Like, if I go get, like, Ushi, right? Three star Ushi, you know, who's much older. Her animation update is way better. I do think Jolters is the better between the two, though. Oh, yeah, we haven't seen her triple art yet. But even Jolters, I think, is still kind of meh. But at least their sprites look way better. Like, holy hell, their sprites were bad before. Dolls growing up, chat. Chen Gong has better animations. Well, that's just a given. The reason they don't put effort into Jalter, it's not really, it's kind of the new limited or any of that. It's just because they're old and most people that want them already have them. So, and I don't think a character being limited, I, I, from, you know, artistic merit here, it shouldn't matter if you're a three star, five star, limited, not limited. You should just make animations that are fitting for the character, right? That should be the goal. And the thing is they have the money. Like if they, if they literally have the money, it's not hard for them to just make everyone have animations that are appropriate and not lazy. I, I don't really care. Like, if you want to make a new character and, of course, make them a five-star because you're putting lots of effort into them and they're going to have super special animations they can th throw a sun at you or whatever, of course, you're going to make them a five-star. But it's like, there should be no reason that you should have a hard time actualizing whatever is appropriate for the character. Like, if they're supposed to do a flurry of kicks or punches or a backflip or whatever, you should be able to do that appropriately. Because they're one of the richest fucking companies on the planet. I mean, I mean, Lizangle's not, but Sony, you know, their publisher and Type Moon are, are you know, very, very, very well off. So, um, there's just, it's, it's one of the most profitable games on the market. There's just no reason that they should be struggling to make basic ass animations for characters. It's embarrassing, dude. It's fucking dumb. Cause they just have, they clearly have a terrible workflow over there. Okay, so her close range quick right now is, is spin, spinning nonsense. But at least their, um, at, at least their character sprites are way better. So it's still an upgrade. I'm, I'm, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I'd rather have this than nothing. Although, funnily enough, for my favorite characters, I'd rather they not get an animation update until this shit gets sorted out, assuming it's ever going to get sorted out. They may be lazy about this stuff from now on because they've figured out it works. Like, why put it... Why, that's that's the problem with, like, a lot of these companies, man. If you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. If they realize they can get away with being lazy with certain things, they, you bet your ass they're going to be lazy with those things. And I think they've realized that they just, they just don't need to put in a lot of effort into animation updates and even new characters, really. All right, can I uh, finally see triple art? Fuck, you're counterclassing him. That's it? You did attack up and you're counterclassing him and that's it. That's your damage, champ. Incredible. He's level one, you're level 10. You got nine levels on him, dude. There you go. Why couldn't you do that last turn? All right, we can finally see triple art now. Also, I don't know if we've seen both Buster animations. I actually like that attack. That, that is, that's all right. I don't know about that one, but uh, the other two arts are pretty good. Dej. It really does look like she kills herself there. All 
All right, we know art gets you close. Oh my god. That's amazing. I, I can't but I can't believe I, I honestly can't believe they did that. They've never done that before. That's amazing. That is pretty good. Man, they need to do that more often when it makes sense. Oh, uh, that's funny. But why quick? Why, why quick of all things? That's so specific. Oh yeah, I remember that buster from before. That's like a really old joke actually, like way back. All right, let's uh, see uh, Antoinette Alter here. Let's see who's got the best one. Okay, there is one that's not third stage. There's one that's third stage. We got um, 888 into one. I think someone else said they had one. But that's that, the one we just saw is probably the best one we got. Oh wait, no, that's the people that are already on my friends list. Uh, this will be fine. All right. Oh, and Saber Nero, what's up, dude? It's been a long time for AUs. I know, seriously. <laughs> what is that emote? Uh, let's go to the story here. Get something productive done. I presume this is stage three. When I click the thing to check. Why is it so hard to load a profile, man? Yeah, it's stage three. So I think we saw one and now we've seen three, so we haven't seen stage two yet. But this one, I think, has the custom animations. So default. And before we die here. Nice opening hand, really getting a lot done here. Very productive. Second outfit looks a lot like Black Grail, huh? I'm mean, gonna guess she is an altar. You fight these guys so much in the story. Sword looks kind of cool. With great effort, they were able to kill a level one George. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I guess rainbow chain's fine. I don't know why I didn't just yeet George there. Yeah, no, no boss battles yet. Oh god, they're doing that weird thing where um, her hips are facing like this way, but then her legs are facing straight forward. That's like such a thing now. They used to never do that, and they do it constantly for the female characters now. It's super weird. I, I don't know why they've started doing that so much. It is super strange. She lost her bones. <laughs> A lot of characters have, apparently. Um, let's see. Hopefully the stage doesn't end when I kill this guy. Yep, they're definitely doing that. These animations are better though. That's kind of odd, because you'd think she would be the opposite of that, but that's kind of like, it doesn't even make sense. That's like Artoria. That's like Artoria using Clarent. That, does, that just doesn't make sense. Uh, well, NP time. I wonder if she gets curse up off this. That'd be nice. No, but uh, she curses everybody. The stage must end after a certain amount of turns or something. Yeah, that's true. Medusa does use the weapon that killed her for some fucking reason, but everyone said that was weird too, so. They've kind of always done weird stuff with Medusa for some reason. Jesus, I, I want to see my art art though. You can definitely loop pretty easily, it looks like. Please don't end the stage here. I didn't get to see Art Art. Now, I don't think the voice acting ever really misses in Fate. Even if a character sounds annoying, it's because they're like they're it's like they're supposed to, right? Like Nero sounding all childish when she's an adult, I find annoying, but she's like supposed to sound that way. That's like the voice direction she got, right? So all the voice actors always do a good job. I can't think of a single character where I'm like, man, they- Oh, that's not as big of a battery as I thought. But- Or no, maybe it's just not leveled. But, um... Yeah, I can't think of a, a voice actor that I've ever been like, man, that's not fitting. I can think of that in English, though. I actually think a lot of the voice casting is bad in English. Uh, I think it was really good in Dean's Day Night. I think Dean's Day Night was really good, but I think Unlimited Blade Works, he, like, recast everyone. That was so dumb. Uh, cause, like, no continuity in the English side because of that. They're always recasting people. But, um, yeah, I, I, a lot of the dubs have been bad, I would say. Not, the voice actors themselves aren't bad, but, like, the casting just doesn't fit. Um, yeah, I think Dean, though, did really good. And then Fate Strange Fake, I think, is doing really well. But, yeah, they, there's just no continuity with the, the English stuff. Let's see, well, we'll do, uh, Buster Art Art. can't really see here, but a whip or something. That was kind of cool. I mean, I definitely think her third stage animations are better than the first one.
I wonder what the wind condition here is. So she seems to get NP from being attacked, which is not really helping us because we're capped, but interesting. Her NP is kind of meh. Like, no, no, it's just kind of seems lazy. Also, I don't get why she Thanos is herself and then nothing happens. You could keep going for a while here, honestly. Oh, you have secret guts. Is it like a, a passive of hers? Like it's not a, it's not a story thing, it's like a, a passive or something? Cause it, it's actually really good if you have guts as a passive. Yeah, maybe they were planning on making her like a Rosh and they just changed because like that's not good for farming. If uh, you could switch her to stage two though, uh, I'd like to see that. Figure to see all this stuff here. Yeah, Fko is pretty obsessed with looping at this point. Snowboard Kids, by the way, the music. All right, actual boss fight, perhaps? We'll use Antoinette again if we can get her. One person that's not a bot. I mean, you can loop with a Rosh, uh, uh, you just need guts and good supports. Not even that hard to do, actually. It looked like stage one, but maybe they're just similar. Hey, can we get two? Oh, that's the same one. That's why. Excuse me. But any, uh, any two havers here? Bots activated. Yeah, it's definitely F go. That must be it. They're kind of doing the, uh, <laughs> Red Riding Hood thing or something. I don't even... Interesting. How does this not have different animations? Or maybe this is the same as stage three. And stage one is actually the unique one. But it'd be weird if this had the animations of stage one. That'd be super strange. This is probably a boss fight, so she's about to die. It's like Black Grail with a bonnet. Kind of odd, but I mean, I've seen worse. It's not, it's not terrible. All right, what do you do? Yeah, they're a little different it looks like, but they're basically stage, like the two and three are the same. But stage one, that's the uh, unique one, funnily enough. Honestly, if I had her, I'd probably use this stage. Most normal. The other dress is way too puffy.
than most normal. I, did, I didn't say this. I, I don't, I'm not going outside and expecting to see anybody dressed like this, okay? This is pretty particle effect spammy though. Yeah, it's the same as three though. This is the actual boss fight though. This much trash beforehand is actually kind of tough. All right, um, because of our bonus damage, I don't think I actually need to NP here. Although I could without many drawbacks, I think. I mean, people think life expectancy was so much shorter back in the day. You can't, uh, it's kinda, you kind of have to be considered an adult sooner. Also, uh, no offense to the modern era, but we mature a lot later nowadays because we're so babied. It just is what it is. Like, people in the olden days went through so much, not necessarily royalty, but the average person went through so much more hardship so much sooner in their life. They grew the fuck up way sooner. We're, we're babied until we're like 25, dude. Ridiculous. Um, let's see. I guess as many stars as possible right here. I wonder if Rainbow Chain is still better. Fuck it, we'll do this. Okay, chat, out of the two new characters in the animation updates, what's your favorite? I don't think Hassan's gonna win much here, but man, I, I really don't like the new Hassan. I wish that wasn't the case, but yeah, Jolter. Yeah, I, I kind of figured Jolter would win. She does probably have the best animations though, out of the slot anyway. But she's, she's pretty popular. Who knew? But yeah, wow, Hassan uh, is, my, I think, my least favorite out of all the Hassans. Maybe not character-wise, right? Because I really don't like Serenity character-wise, but... Is Jolter rated up right now? I didn't look. No, damn. She's probably gonna get rated up though. I'd be surprised if she didn't. Probably should have been vulnerability before. I think I overestimated my uh, my damage a bit. Curse command codes make sense on her. I actually thought Nash was better before, to be honest. The old VA. It was kind of dumb, too. They replaced her. I I'm honestly surprised she still works with them. Now, I know in that industry, you don't want to burn bridges and you take what work you can. And also Japanese culture, you don't really make a big deal out of these things. But they really fucked her over because first off, Efko wasn't that voice acting intensive back then. Um, even from Nash, you know, they didn't add new voice lines with her often at all. And then, uh, so, you know, they hired her, she was voice acting Mash for a while, then she got sick and they instantly fired her and replaced her. And she wasn't, like, sick that long, and I don't think they even needed new voice lines done. And even if they did, they could have pretty easily waited, because the way FGO is, most things just aren't voice acted. So, it, it was pretty, it honestly was weird. Like, I remember when that happened, it was like so weird how fast they replaced her. Um, it was kind of whack. But yeah, I know she's a pretty popular VA, so I, she's not hurting for work, uh, I'm sure. But so, it was just so strange. I remember I was like, what the fuck? Very odd. 
Oh yeah, and then there was a bunch, there was a bunch of drama both ways where like people that like, like the new voice actress, like give a shit to the old voice actress and vice versa. That's, that's always a thing though with anime and, and games and stuff. Bunch of crazy fucks. The right thing to do, and th th I, I don't, I can't, I don't blame the, the VAs because they don't have anything to do with it. But like the companies, the managers and all that kind of stuff, um, fuck them because it's their fault. It is. It is ultimately a real minority of people that are like fucked up stalker type behavior and all that nonsense. But the idol industry, a lot of the voice acting industry, a lot, a lot of the games and a lot of that stuff, they pander to it so hard because they're greedy. They want the money from these people. And so they normalize it and the, um, you know, put a spotlight on it. So I, the, I think the, I truly think they actively make it worse. I really do think the industry, you know, the corporations at large actively make that kind of thing worse and uh, make people think they can get away with it and c kind of because they can. Um, it, it's pretty fucked up. Not really a fan of that. I actually think the West really is better about that. Generally in the West, when you have just jackass stalker-like behavior, you know, everyone decries that and when they make music and stuff over here, they don't pander to that kind of uh, culture at all. It's quite the opposite. So it gets shut down way better. Where, um, yeah, in the East, I think they really do have a bad habit of being like, well, but we can get money from them though. Okay. Um, what are we doing here? I guess I do this. Yeah, I see she's got that hidden debuff immunity. That's really bad for her then because she's a uh, pretty debuff base. Unfortunate. Also, this crit rate or um, crit spread, like my art cards are my best cards and then they don't have any crit whatsoever. Yeah, you can look up old mash. There should be on YouTube. I honestly prefer the way she was before. She's like... She's like too waifu-y, like over the top, like, sounding these days. I don't like it as much. But MASH is really just not my kind of character no matter what, so... Dude, Antoinette has no chance here. <laughs> like, she's just... No way. This may not be a real boss fight still, though. I'm not sure. But we're still doing very little damage. She's still debuff immune. I, maybe you're supposed to break the first health bar. I could see that. Yeah, I could definitely see that. I mean, they might make you break all of them. If you have a real team, it's not unreasonable. 96%. Unfortunate. Yeah, the story is everyone became an Avenger and they all went to school. The end. Fate was solved. 2.0 is over. Elderberries is gone. Well, maybe we get a lucky double crit here, but we're pretty boned. So it's, I was obviously joking, but I wasn't like completely wrong. It's like set in the MC's head and like right before they joined Shaldia, so when like they were in school and like the characters, the servants are like replacing, you know, characters from his past or whatever. So, this sounds like a fan fiction. Uh, that, that, that would be correct. Okay, no actual guts here. All right, let's fight that stage for real now. We could make like a Jolter team or something. That might be kind of fun. It's my old account, so we can do whatever. Lost still here. I know Lost is at work, so he might be uh, busy. But it'd be cool to use Lost uh, Golfer. I can slot mine if needed. Lost check. 
So far, uh, damage resist has been the gimmick of this thing. Every stage has had it. We'll see uh, if that stays. Okay, I've got my other my main account already up here. Let me just give Jolter some command codes or something. Go with um, stage one or something. What to give her? Heal seems pretty good. The one issue Jolter has is her maximum HP. I wouldn't say it's low, it's just not high by any means. It's low for a 5 star, but a decent amount in total. I like how nothing matches here, like the card type and the, the thing over there. Uh, I'll fix that in a minute. So the boss has damage resist, they have an invulnerability. Got buff block, but they've got debuff immune because they're cheating. Could do uh, the katana. He's a weeb anyway. <laughs> Me and the boys watching CCUI. Uh. Go heal boost. If I can find it. Imagine if they ever gave us a second heal boost command code. It'd be wild. Could do star bomb or something. Yeah, it's fine. Maybe attack removal star bomb on quick. Which is Abigail. Okay, let's fix the art nonsense here. Shut up, phone. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll go stage one. Her stage two looks more normal now, though, because it used to be so bad with the head bobble, you don't have to really worry about that anymore. But we haven't even seen stage one. I don't think it's going to change her animations by any means. So the flag is still kind of out of place in my opinion, but uh, what are you going to do? I've never liked her stage three. I, uh, it's just way too much. Like, I don't like the colors. I really don't like the red in here. Uh, the hair is just way too over the top and like, it's just too fancy. Like the, like the fur and like the extra embroidery on the armor and stuff, it's just a bit too much. And like, the hair is just, what the fuck, man? That is way too over the top. This is a bit more, um... is normal. Roll's eyes. Yeah, I cannot get my playlist to actually play here. Uh, we'll go with the old Golden Sumo. Could go gutsy e though. You get all those trash mobs. Um, level ninety one. Yeah, okay. It lowers my NP damage a good bit, but um, that's pretty good for her. Only twelve k health, so. And all those trash mobs mean getting her NP is no problem. I don't need to like loop, loop, loop or anything. Okay, playlist. I've refreshed you like thirty times. You want to actually play the song? Like Jesus. Oh fuck, I have to summon something. This is a perfect example of when I wish I could just not summon a uh, a support at all and just use all my units. Oh wait, no, I need I need to summon my Jolter, right? Because I'm going to my ult account, excuse me. Take it back! Just kidding. Although I still wish that was an option 100% though. Look, I just logged in game. What do you want from me? Jeez. Come on. Wanna play the game? No? Okay. 
What a great support system we've got over here. Maybe I don't have myself added right now or something. 888. By the way, this is in after Lost Belt 7. 888. Why did he do that? Holy fuck, how am I not getting myself? Not sure I've ever had Nightingale slotted before him. Jesus, why did that take so long? Um, you know, this team uh, is not terrible for her, although you need more long-term because of the start. You really need some AoE at the start, to be honest. Like, man, that's going to take a minute if I don't have any, but fuck it. Uh, let's see. This is honestly really good. This is just a really good CE in general. Especially for, uh, what's her name? Salome, Salam, Salami Sandwich. Um, everything, because it's got debuff success chance up. Super good for her. I always use Kuo in my main account, so try not to use him over here. But he just makes a lot of sense as a cleanup unit. What are you going to do? Hmm. It's basically just as good, right, chat? All right, when you're fighting an Avenger, you're class neutral, and they're not a, a wild beast. They're basically the same thing. Look, he's stronger lore-wise, right? He's got higher stats and stuff. So, uh, should be totally good here. Have they made CEs as stupid as Yang CE in the last few years? Not really, but they did make a welfare CE that um, is 20% damage up when they're cursed, and then it also has 50% starting NP. So uh, that one's really good. Why does he have higher stats again? Because he's younger. So he's just, you know, more in his prime, I suppose. But he's got a higher uh, endurance and agility. He's actually a stat monster. Like, uh, Protoku, if you look at his character material book, he is nuts. Like, he's he doesn't have disengage like regular Q does. And uh, there's a few other minor things. But then he's got better armor. They straight up say that he's got better armor. They have the same runes. They both have death flight and barbed death. Um, and, and then he just has higher stats. It's higher stats and the better armor, so... And his, his armor also is infused with runes, like regular Ku's got, so he can block like an NP with his armor and stuff. It's crazy. He's even got a clairvoyance run and stuff like that. Like, super crazy strong servant, honestly. What is a good cleanup unit? I mean, it's just Ku. Ku is like the best cleanup unit this account has. I'm trying to think what else I could bring, though. I mean, if Jolter's still alive, I could just bring a support for her. I could do like, um, Asclepius. Not terrible. I don't know if I've got a cope scope, but I'm too lazy to look. Uh, I could probably just use soccer as scope. Better for him anyway, because you get health. And then I have to find soccer as scope. I probably have a higher level one. Yeah, there we go. Default is fine. I don't think I need which Aru nonsense. Bring <laughs> Sean to Mark. Uh, I don't need a bunch of five stars right now. It's fine. That would be funny though. Uh, I'll probably do that later. Rarity is just never equaled lore power. I mean, from the beginning, they were bullshitting that. Like with uh, Hercules and uh, all that nonsense. And then you've got like a Rosh. A Rosh is so fucking powerful and he's a one star. Then you've got Jack who's a five star and that was really early on. 
Some people unironically try to argue that Jack is a super top tier servant. I don't know what they are talking like, dude. Her character material book she is so pathetic. Like she is such a meh servant. And Jesus, she does so bad in APOC. She doesn't accomplish anything. Like she's not the weakest servant that ever existed, uh, but she's not very impressive. And if she fights a male, oh god, like she's so screwed. This is such a bad opening hand, jeez. Yeah, Rosh is really strong. I think the strongest low stars lore-wise, like where, like, if you wanted to say, you know, rarity equals power, which it doesn't, but if you wanted to say that, the ones that'd be the most incorrect, uh, in no particular order, but these all stand out. Asterios, Arash, Ku, um, let's see. There's a lot of low stars, but it's kind of hard to <laughs> remember. But th those three really do stand out. Oh, yeah, Romulus, oh God. Yeah, regular Romulus is so strong, he's on the reverse side of the moon and extra and stuff. And if you just read his toolkit, his NP is equivalent to Excalibur. I I'm not bullshitting. Um, like, it's crazy. And he's got, um, his attack NP is the complete equal to Excalibur. And then uh, he's got another NP where he can summon castle walls and they can block NPs to defend himself. But he can also, it says he can spawn the walls out of the ground so quickly that they can catap- uh, Decapitate a servant. Never mind a person. Like a, a, if they're fast enough to catch a servant, so it, that's just crazy. And then they can defend for him. He can turn his divinity on and off. He's got imperial privilege at like the highest rank. Uh, yeah, he's he's crazy. He's such a strong character. But yeah, he's just a three star. I mean, you, you can't really quantify the different NPs on the Hassans. They're not all equal. But uh, I would say her in Jack with all three prerequisites. First off. That already makes it not equal, right? Like, like that's very important, right? Like, because the prerequisites make it so much worse. Like, imagine, let, let's, for sake of argument, let's say her NP is as good as Curse Arms. I don't think it is, but let, let's say for sake of argument it is when she has all three prerequisites. What sounds better? The NP that's that strong that you can just do, or the NP that's that strong that you need three very specific conditions to be met? to be able to do, huh, right? It's not very good, right? And then Curse Arm also has better stealth than she does and is way more skilled than she is. Like, it's just not even close, right? He's way better. And that's just Curse Arm. No offense to Curse Arm, but he's not exactly the strongest assassin out there. Um, yeah, David's really strong lore-wise. Uh, I don't think I'd put him on the same level, though, as Asterios, Arash, Ku, uh, Romulus. Like, he's very good. Like, you could easily find four and five stars that David is stronger than. But uh, he's not quite uh, on that level. Um, Darius is pretty strong, but same deal with David. I wouldn't put him on the same level as the others. Uh, Fergus is really strong, definitely. Hector's pretty strong. Not Definitely not Ku strong, though, and, and uh, Asterio strong. Um, yeah, Medusa's up there. She's absolutely not on Ku's level. Or Romulus and stuff. She's, I would say she's, though, around, you know, like that kind of... Um, David, Darius level, so definitely stronger. Okay, George, yeah, George is definitely, uh, and he's a two star, so lower than Ku, and yeah, George is nuts. I would definitely put George above Medusa and whatnot. Um, let's see. Yeah, Darius is kind of a mana hog, but he's pretty strong. The thing is, Fergus only beats Ku because of, um, the, um, Pios. When, when Ku becomes more a like when he's younger, Fergus is, is better. But once Ku is in his prime and whatnot, there's really no evidence to suggest Fergus is even close to him. Uh, I, don't, I don't think Fergus would even think such a thing. Uh, and because like if, if Fergus could just straight up beat Ku, Mev wouldn't have had so many fucking problems. So yeah, I, I don't think so. And when, like Fergus is no joke. I mean, really, like Fergus really is a strong uh, character both in like fate and in, in like his actual legends and stuff, but there really is nothing to suggest that he's on Ku's level uh, Hector's strong, but I mean he's I, I don't think he's near like Ku or anything like him being able to fight Achilles is in a pretty specific circumstance 
Um, like overall, he's much weaker than Achilles. Like much, much weaker. Uh, yeah, I guess Kid Gill. You know, Kid Gill is much weaker than regular Gill, but Kid Gill is would still like wipe the floor with most servants. Um, like he could take on you know half the cast of three stars without much issue. Uh, Paris isn't that crazy canonically. Um, maybe stronger than a two star would suggest though, but I wouldn't say he's on par with like um, you know, uh, Arash or anything. Rice Man is pretty good, um, but there's a, most of the three stars are pretty solid. Like Ushi, Ushi is no joke and stuff, but uh, they're still not on the level of like the three stars we've been mentioning here. Um, oh yeah, Caesar. Actually, see, I, I Caesar kind of same. I think Caesar's in like that Darius range. Like, yeah, he's definitely stronger than I think a lot of people think. I will say they say one. It's pretty clear in his character material book that he's strong, but in the story when you face him, they say he's the strongest servant you fought up to that point. And up to that point, you fought Jolter, you fought Lancelot, um, you know, Gilles de Rays, although without his monster, he's pretty weak. Um, you fought, uh, I mean, you fought all kinds of stuff up to that point. And they just straight up say Caesar's stronger than all of them. Like, Caesar's no joke. If you look at his character material book, it's pretty scary. And I mean, it's Caesar, he's so famous. Um, oh yeah, Lu Bu's pretty strong, yeah, absolutely. I definitely would say he's in like that Darius range where he's much stronger than I think people think, but maybe not quite um, like uh, Ku. Romulus level and all that. Benavir, eh, I mean, he's good, but he's kind of in that Ushi range, I would say. Spartacus is definitely, oh yeah, Jesus, because he's a one star, uh, and he is pretty strong. Even says in his character material book, like, he's really hard to kill, and so it's easy for him to power up his NP, and then if he, if he gets his NP in, like, to its max, he can wipe out an entire Grail War, right? Like, if he just goes off in Fuyuki, everyone's dead, right? Like, that's pretty nuts. No, no, uh, in a practical setting, though, he's, like, impossible to work with, so there is that. Um, but, yeah, Bed Bedivere's strong, but, uh, yeah, he is weaker than most of the Knights of the Round Table, but he's still no joke. Yeah, Leo's pretty strong, absolutely. Um, I, I haven't actually seen Theseus. I don't think Theseus has a character material book yet. So, um, you the bio only gives you so much to work with, so I don't actually know how strong he is lore-wise. Yeah, basically, uh, Bedivere's the weakest, but, uh, of the lot for the Knights of the Round, but the Knights of the Round are really strong, so. Yeah, Theseus is probably pretty strong, I, I would imagine, in, in Fate. I'll have to look into it. Um, yeah, uh, Braun is broken. I'd actually say, if he completes Adam and he makes it to Stage 3, he's stronger than every other character we've mentioned here. Uh, maybe Kid Gill, but I don't, Kid Gill is a lot weaker than regular Gill. But Kid Gill is still really, really dangerous. Um, he may not be weaker than Gareth. I'm not really sure about that one. But yeah, um, a VC Braun in the right context is outrageously strong. Uh, I don't know, the Romulus is pretty nuts, though. Um, out of what we listed, I'd say it's like conditionally a VC Braun, like highest peak by a lot, and then probably Romulus and then Koo, I would say. But yeah, a VC Braun's ridiculous. All right, let me get through these trash mobs. Jill Rays with his monster is really strong. Definitely not Adam strong though. I mean, they're, they're, that's a very comparable character. So first off, a VC Braun is a better combatant on his own without uh, uh, Adam than Jill Rays is by a lot. Um, and then Adam is absolutely stronger than Jill Rays monster. It, it's really not close. Like it, it, Adam is much stronger. Like, Jill DeRay's monster's nuts, and he could wipe out a whole Grail War, but Adam can easily wipe out a whole Grail War. Like, a lot of people don't probably don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, and it's because the anime just does not explain Adam very well, and they cut a lot of Adam's stuff. But, um, yeah, a Adam is m absolutely bananas with how strong he is. Pretty much everyone I've ever seen that's actually read APOC, the book, and then the character material for VC Braun is like, yeah, that's OP as fuck. I mean, it's just, it's like, he literally can like conquer the world in a very odd way, but uh, he's pretty much unbeatable once he's stage three. Outside of like very, very, very specific circumstances. Let's see. Um... Sanson, I, uh, he, you know, he's got horrible, like, presence concealment. Um, his stats aren't very good. However, his NP is really strong, like, lore-wise. Like, his NP is actually quite scary. 
but he uh, he's probably I would say he would be if you're gonna like make him a rarity uh, like lore equals power I would say he should be a three star right so conditionally can be really strong but overall is really nothing special uh, Neff should be a five star holy fuck Neff is so scary I, I, I like if you ever want a, a, a trip go read his character material book like what the actual fuck he has got so much OP nonsense like the traps he can set are just ridiculous and he's got all these like passives to make it so you're just like screwed all the time he, he's actually wild like his NP is super scary his passives are super scary all of his skills are super scary yeah, Tesla, I would say, would be a five star. Tesla is at top tier. He's got an EX rank offensive NP, an EX rank defensive NP. He's got his galvanization is so good. If you read the character material for it, it basically supplies him with all the mana he wants, and it also can defend him against enemy attacks. Or if enemy attacks are made out of mana or light or energy or anything like that, he can absorb them uh, and, and turn them into energy for himself. You combine that with his like EX shield. That his, his defenses are just crazy. Um, yeah, he, he's he's fucking super strong. Like he's I, I actually put him in like a really really high high tier. He's not Gilgamesh tier, but he's way up there. Like EX offense and defense is just so good. And like all of his skills are super good. You know, I think I NP here. We got plenty of time to get it back. Nice synergy with uh, Pawns and Jolter, actually. I'm gonna have to remember that if I want to use her more in the future with the animation update. Now, for the reverse, some of the characters that are like rarities they probably shouldn't be. Uh, I would say, honestly, say, no offense to say, Stan, but I would say, say, really should not be a five star. Jack should not be a five star. Okita should not be a five star. Um. Let's see, especially when you look at like Ushi and stuff, like what the fuck? But um, I would say also uh, Hot Wheels, you know, Ash, he should be probably five star instead of four star. Hercules should be five star. Um, what else, what else? Oh yeah, Canis should probably be a five star. Yeah, definitely, because Canis' toolkit and lore is actually nuts. And they even say when she's been materialized for a while, she doesn't just become like kind of a god, like a divine spirit. She becomes a full on divine spirit, like just as strong as pretty much any other god, um, which is like broken as fuck. Um, yeah, Fionn, although they kind of nerf him in fate, they don't really give him his due, but he does have a really strong toolkit still. I don't, I don't think Roland should be a five star. Um, although I've only read his bio, I haven't, if he has a character material, I haven't read it, but in this new world where like we're organizing by power equals rarity the bar to be five star is much higher right because you're being compared to things like gilgamesh romulus you know hercules um you know karna you know these things are just so busted i i from what i've seen of roland he's i think four star or three star is fine because again three star is not a bitch right if you look at the average that we'd put in three star things like ushi i would say ushi i'd say is almost a four star um, he's like 3.5 star, I would say. You know, th th some of the three stars are pretty damn competent. Uh, I'd say Percival, mm, probably four star. I'd have to look at his kit again, but I I'd say four star, 4.5. I think a lot of the Knights of the Round would be like four star, 4.5, I would say. Because, for example, Lancelot and Gwen are more skilled than Artoria, but some of their powers aren't as strong as hers, right? Um, like... Excalibur, I'd say, is, is better. I mean, Galatea uh, is hard to quantify because it's like, it's less damage, but it's the blast radius is so big, it's absurd. Like, it's one of the most large, like, large radius NPs ever. So it's kind of hard to say. Okay, actually, Gwen's broken. I don't know what I'm thinking. Gwen is so broken. Gwen is not Lancelot's equal, like, in terms of, like, there's no plot armor. Gwen is so fucking broken. Because without the sunlight thing, he's still a top tier servant that, like, really should be very close to Lancelot. Like, he's still very skilled. He's got crazy high stats. Um, he's got really good NP, really good skills, right? And, and he's, like, he's really skilled. Without the sun, 
He's like really, really good, but because anime plot armor and stuff, they kind of just make him nothing without the sun, even though that makes no sense when you look at his character material book. Because his stats are just so high without the sun. And then you give him the sun and they're times three. And then he just becomes broken, right? Like, Gwen is so dumb lore wise. Like, it, it, without plot armor, because he's always getting plot smacked, right? He's always getting plot smacked. But without plot armor, Gwen would body most things, right? Like, he's just his stats are just way too high to deal with. And then you can't dodge his NP at all, right? And most servants don't have, like, really good defensive stuff. Um, I mean, some do for sure, but um, Gwen is nuts. Uh, Mordred, let's see. So they say Mordred is basically the equivalent of Artoria skill-wise. I think Artoria is slightly better, but they're very, very comparable. I think Artoria's probably got more experience, but more... Well, they're probably close in that because Mordred was a knight, not a king, so she's out there doing stuff more often than Arthur is, but... Um, Artoria is older. And uh, the, the, the main difference with, like, skill is, like, Artoria's, like, calmer... And, uh, which is surprising, but uh, but Mordred's more willing to fight dirty. But that's a that's a benefit. It's objectively good to fight dirty. There's just nothing. You're just holding yourself back when you you don't fight dirty. So they're they're kind of comparable in that department. Mordred's NP is just worse than Artoria's though in every way possible. A against Artoria specifically, it's not. But against everyone else that so by the way, I, I really have to stress this. I like Mordred, but this is a huge drawback to Mordred, which I would say definitely makes her not a five star. Um, in APOC, so the books explain this, the anime doesn't, but in the books, they explain that normally just a part of Mordred's NP is anytime she uses it, it causes her massive pain. Not like just, oh, that hurt, stung a little bit. Like it absolutely foobars her to use it. Now they kind of have forgotten about that, but that that's in her character material book. And the only reason... Um, it doesn't happen in APOC is because uh, she's so compatible with her master. Right? And this has always been a thing in Fate. The more compatible you are with your master, the smoother like everything is for the servant. And her master is like just... She's like the most compatible with her master that any servant has like ever been with a master. So she gets like the, the best compatibility you can get. And so he alleviates the drawback of the NP so that doesn't happen. And they'll, if they'll probably say in FGO, if Nas was ever asked about it, he'd probably just say, oh, it's just compatible with the master in FGO too. Dur -dur -dur -dur. Um, but canonically, it's just a part of her NP that it, it completely fucks her up to use it. That's horrible. That's not good because it's a mana hog. It's strong, but it's certainly not as strong as Excalibur. Then that's a terrible drawback. She's got, uh, I will say though, she's still a really good servant because she's got good stats. She's really skilled. She has a very high endurance stat. She has very tanky armor on top of that. And she has battle continuation, right? So she's actually stupid hard to kill. Um, and then when, you're, when she does have a really strong NP and, and mana burst and, and all that stuff, like she's good. Like she's definitely good, but I'd say she's like, you know, four star, 4.5, something like that. Um, I, I'd probably just say four star though, really. Cause like those are some pretty significant drawbacks. So she's no Hercules, right? If Hercules is a five star, Mordred ain't a five star, right? Like no way. Um, Aggravain, we don't know enough about his toolkit. We just, we know a little bit about his, his NP and stuff, but we just, we don't know enough. Um, could Gwen beat Hercules during the day? Um, uh, he'd probably become unkillable. Uh, I mean, I don't know. The, the, the plot, it'd be up to the writer. Let's not kid ourselves. They plot nerf Hercules all the time and they just make some dumbass NP kill him like 30 times. I mean, it's, it's stupid. Uh, Tristan's OP is fuck. Uh, I actually think Tristan, on uh, when you really look at his accomplishments and his character material book, I think he's one of the strongest knights of the round. I think Gwen may be stronger just because Gwen is really, really broken. Um, but Tristan is so scary. His, his fucking heart bow is just bullshit. I mean, he like he's actually crazy. Like he he ties and it, uh, really it wasn't even a tie. Uh, you know, he just whoops a uh, hundred phase Serenity and Curse Arm right all together. Right, that's that's kind of nuts. Now, he was buffed there, but um, now his, his toolkit really is scary. Like, uh, if you read his character material book, it is it is something. He can just gank the shit out of you, but he still has good stats. He's got good defenses, um, really good passives. He, he's really hard to gank, and he's really good at ganking you. So, and then he's good in a head-on fight as well. Very scary. Uh, I would still say maybe 4.5 star, though, just because, like, if Hercules is our standard for 5 star now... That's a lot. That that that's um that's really strong. How about Beowulf? Um, so it's been a while since I've read Beowulf's thing. He's got really high stats. He's super super tanky. 
He does have something very unique where he he gains his true like strength temporarily when he does his NP, where he's like not being nerfed by being a servant anymore temporarily. Um, he's one of the only characters that has anything like that actually. That's bananas, right? And so it's hard to quantify how strong he actually is when he does that, but very, very strong. Um, he's got a lot of NPs, like a lot of NPs with a lot of different effects. Um, still, pr I, with the new world we're living in here, I, he's probably still a four star, I would say. Like very, very strong, but I, I, don't, I don't see that being like Gilgamesh strong. Hercules strong, Karna strong, right? I don't think he's like at that level, but still not bad, like certainly not bad. But Koopy a five star, let's see. Either, I, maybe, if so, just barely. Um, or on like the really high end of, of four star. I, I will say, probably though, because Bulg is, his version of Bulg is so scary. Like, it's, his version of Bulg is so much scarier than all the other Bulgs, in my opinion. And then, like, he's got the runs, he's got the auto run that automatically will block an NP for him. He's super agile, he's one of the most skillful Lancers, period. Um, got, you know, really good stats. And then, Bulg is just nuts. I mean, Bulg is so, is so nuts. But, uh, his composition is pretty wild. If we're saying five stars to thing like, things like Gilgamesh and Karna and all that, I think barely five star because I really do think he is the equivalent to Karna in a lot of ways. A lot of people would say bullshit, but I, I would say absolutely. I think Bulg is just that scary, and then Ku is probably more skilled than Karna is. And then although Karna's got the 90% damage reduction thing, Ku's way more mana efficient. He's one of the most agile like uh, servants ever. His runs are so versatile. Like I, I think Ku really is super strong in uh, almost any circumstance. If he's not holding back, I really do think Ku can pretty much keep up with anybody. Um, I don't think he's as good as Gil by any means, though, uh, clearly. But I, I'd say barely five star. I would say like barely five star for Ku. Because he does the one thing about Ku I think that really holds him back is he doesn't have a giant fuck everything that moves button. Right? He's got great defense. He's got runes that he's like his runes can dispel um, Eyes of Death. Perception, right? That's amazing, right? Or watch all mystic eyes. That's really really good. He's got so much utility like that and bowl can just murder something That's like way stronger than Ku because it scales up the tougher the enemy is That's actually something it says in its character material book is like it's just godly at killing like, you know These massive monstrosity, you know world ending monsters just through the unique property of it I'd say Siegfried is pretty four star very tanky um, but I mean, I, I think the fact that he's just so outclassed by Karna and Achilles shows that he sh uh, he shouldn't be a five star. If you were saying, you know, that you know, five star equals power, uh, to be clear for new people, that's not you know how it is. But yeah, I would say four star because yeah, he's very tanky, pretty solid NP. Um, but it's not Excalibur level unless you're fighting a dragon. Um, he, although he is tanky, he's not like as tanky as like a lot of the crazy shit out there, like Tesla and Hercules and and, and all that. Um. He's very good, right? He's a scary servant because he is skilled. He, um, he's got some nice passives. You know, he's NP strong and he can face tank a lot of stuff, but that, that's it, right? There's the, the other five stars are going, oh yeah, and Kidu's, of course, and Kidu's five star, like potentially, you know, among the absolute best. Uh, and Kidu's broken as fuck. Um, yeah, I've been probably 4.5, you know, four, four ish, uh, from a five. If he gets some of the, the laws belt specific stuff, I'd say five star though. Um, in some ways, I would say Enkidu is stronger than Gil just because he's more serious. I mean, the thing is, if Gil is serious, Gil, I would actually say is stronger than Enkidu. Like, I, th I think like Aya is just better than the tree or in most circumstances. Um, and Gate is just really, really, really broken. Um, but bec because Enkidu is serious way more than Gil is, I would say Enkidu is a greater threat to more servants most of the time. I, I, if I was a servant, there is just no world I'd want to fight in Kidu. I don't, I don't care what my toolkit is. I don't, do not want to deal with that thing. Like, fuck that. Um, he does, although I will say, in Kidu does have some weaknesses, Gil doesn't, and you kind of see that in Fate Strange Fake. He is susceptible to certain things, but still, he's really, really scary. Um, Super Orion, let's see. I'd say 4.5, maybe even 5, it kind of depends. He, he is kind of susceptible again to just getting ganked and stuff like that. He doesn't have as versatile of a toolkit as a lot of the five stars for, like that were. Oh yeah, Buddha's five star easy. Um, oh my, like never mind his super NP. I mean, his other NP is like 
just crazy top tier. And like Buddha is so broken. So he nerfs all servant stats by one. And if you're like, um, most servants alert stats will be nerfed by two. Right, do you realize how bad most servants are if their stats are lowered by like one or two? They just become so weak. And then he's got like ridiculously good defense with his martial arts. Uh, he's got like the laser spam. Uh, he's got so much stuff. And then his main NP is just one of the most broken NPs that I think they've ever made. And I think that's intentional. Um, like Buddha is truly scary. Yeah, Zerker and Kidu is, is implied to just be stronger than Gil from what they've said. Um, so yeah, that's if we ever see that. Let's see though, what else? Um, I would actually say Jonah Arc is probably three star. I, I would actually agree with that because she's got some of the best defense ever, but that's about it. Now, if she's got the Grail on her side as a ruler, then I think she's higher because you have to remember some of what she does in like APOC is not her ability, right? It's the Grail's ability, right? Like her having um, like such good presence detection and the command spells and all, none of that stuff is actually what she can do. Uh, I would say she's like a, a three star that is situationally really scary, right? And really strong. And a lot of three stars are like that. Like Ushi is like that. Um, Cause like her NP is bananas. But like her magic resist is only that high because of the gra uh, being hooked up, being like, or sponsored by the Grail, right? It's not, she doesn't naturally have EX magic resist. Now as a ruler, I would say she's probably a four star, 4.5 star. Like as a ruler, she's, rulers are just inherently really scary. Uh, Edmund is definitely five star. Edmund's absurd. He can resurrect himself with higher stats. His NP is like so powerful and super ganky. He can attack your soul for God's sakes. Um, he can teleport. He's got double charm immunity. Um, like you are not charming that man under any circumstance. He's just got so many passives that are like really scary. Um, like his NP is just nuts. It's just like it, almost nothing can survive his NP really. Like if there's no plot armor uh, and he's just so fast, he's going to get it off super easy. And if you gank him, he just comes back. It, it's ridiculous. Um, Odysseus, I'd say four star. I don't really see anything in his kit that would put him on par with Achilles and stuff. Like Hercules, um, like maybe 4.5, like right, definitely a high four, but I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not forgetting something in his kit. Like the Trojan horse is nuts and all that. And he does have some pretty good passives off memory, but I, yeah, age, uh, he does have Aegis. That's true. Aegis is pretty good, but um, still if the five stars are just so stacked with, in like the way we're doing it right now, um, it's close. I, he's kind of like with Ku, I would say, where it's like, yeah, this is really good. Um, so maybe low five. I'd still say Ku is actually a little bit better though, just because like Bulk is that broken. But uh, he's definitely in that ballpark. Like I'd have to read his stuff again. I may be forgetting something. Um, let's see, Jason. Jason would be like mm, maybe two, three star, I would say. He's pretty weak lore wise, honestly. Um, that's, so if things were fair, Shakespeare would be a five star by Fate's logic with like fame affecting power and all that stuff. Um, but what's canonically in his toolkit right now, he's probably a three star, I would say. Because he kind of needs other factors in play to be that strong. Now he's a three star that can fuck you up. Like for example, he would murder Jolter, uh, like no problem. Um, he'd murder Mordred, right? No problem. Um, He'd fail miserably against things like Gilgamesh and Karna, though, like, uh, Jesus Christ. But, like, his mind games and stuff would really fuck up a lot of servants. And, um, but, yeah, for, for Shakespeare to really shine, he needs other, like, factors. Like, a good master, for example, to give the enchantment to. Like, if he was working with Bazette, but Bazette in Shakespeare is actually really scary. Because Bazette is already a master that's, like, way stronger than normal, and then if, um... If Shakespeare can enchant her, then okay, that that that's fucked, right? Um, but yeah, a lot of times, um, I think Shakespeare would have a lot of problems because he's just very, um, he can't fight head on at all. Like, no way. William Tell, I actually forget a lot of his toolkit. I, uh, I have read his, his stuff before, but I don't remember his toolkit very well, so I don't know. Uh, Reshigal, I would say 4.5 or 5 star, depending on the circumstances. She's in the underworld 5 star easy. She's actually insanely powerful in the underworld. Um... She's actually so strong, I'm actually confused. Because in Lost Belt 7, she is on par with the White Titan. 
Like, what the fuck? I, I, I don't, now she is in the underworld technically there, and so that's why, but like, literally what the fuck, right? Um, that's actually ridiculous. So, um, yeah, if she's in the underworld, it should go a very easy five star. Uh, Fate Range Fake, Ishtar, probably five star too. I mean, like, she's pretty ridiculous. Um, she never really fought anyone crazy OP head on though. Cause like, Gil gets ganked because of the key and then because of whom, uh, however the fuck they pronounce Humbaba over there. Um, so she never really fought anybody like super head on. Um, but she fought in Kido a little bit. So, I mean, she, I mean, she's pretty busted, though. Like, I, I'd say easy five. I don't see why she wouldn't be a five star. There's really nothing. Like, she just has really good everything. Um, maybe a little bit gankable. and maybe the one problem, but that, that, uh, most people are. So, yeah, I'd say she's easy five star. Like, super easy five star. Uh, Richard, probably four star. Like, really, really good, but he's not doing anything crazy broken like, um, like Karna. And uh, uh, Oz, Ozzy's obviously a five star. But, yeah, I'd say he's like four star. Um, the writers, let's see, um, true writer, I would say three star, unless she's going to show off something I'm really, un you know, uh, unaware of, but I'd say like three star, very Ushi level. Um, I mean, definitely good though. And then, uh, pale writer, um, probably four. I mean, it's hard to say, like he can be so much scarier depending on his master. Like, his, his master's interpretation of, like, death and everything affects him a lot. So, in certain circumstances, I think he could be really, 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 really strong. But, uh... Yeah, probably four-star, because if you look at what we're, the way we're doing this right now, the, the four-stars are all pretty fucking powerful. So, uh, yeah, I'd say probably four-star. I'd say Ron was four-star, I would say. Uh, now, if they did his lore more justice, he'd be five-star, but they didn't, so I would say four-star. Uh, it's pretty accurate. Also, he does nerf himself. You know, that is kind of canonically a thing, so... The thing is, the reason I don't think Pale Rider should be a five-star is because right now, we're really only putting things in five-star that are like... You know, Ozzy, Achilles, Gilgamesh, Karna, um, you know, Romulus. These these things are just absurd, and they're 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 like, you know, like world dominating absurd without needing any special conditions or criteria, right? Where um, Pale Rider does need some conditions and stuff. He is very scary, and like I think he can keep up with the the five stars in the right context, but not always, right? Uh, I would say his Kandar, although his NP is like hilariously uh, strong, I would still say it's four star because he doesn't have like an I win button like Karna's NP or Gilgamesh's NP. Because like you think Gilgamesh has Aya, but then he also has his armor and he also has all these shields in NP and all these like, you know, future predicting things and auto defense systems, right? As, as strong as his Kandar is, like his NP will defeat a lot of servants for free. He's still kind of gankable though. He's not like he, he doesn't have like a you know super strong defense NP or you know clairvoyance and you know, he doesn't have uh, magic and all. He doesn't have all that stuff, right? He's good. You know his chariot's really strong. His main NP is super strong. Decent stats, right? Uh, all these things. Like there's a lot of good stuff here, but most of the four stars that we're kind of listing right now are really really powerful, right? Like really 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 powerful. So I think he's like he's like a four star that in the right circumstances can definitely punch up, right? Uh, but sometimes punch down, right? Some servants counter the fuck out of his NP, right? Like big, big time. Like Gwen, right? Gwen effortlessly, well, maybe not effortlessly, but Gwen's NP should be able to deal with that, you know, and that's that. Um, yeah, I'd say Charlemagne is like four star. Um, a lot of the like, you know, big shots, I'd say are, that's, I think in my opinion, if you're gonna make rarity equal power, four star is above average. Right, so like, cause a three star, I would say is kind of like, yeah, it's a good servant, but they're not, maybe nothing, you know, special. Uh, but they're good, you know, really solid. You know, you know, all servants are powerful unless they're like abnormally weak. So three stars are very, very powerful. But then four stars are like, man, this is a real cut above. Like, you know, this is like, man, this servant is abnormal. And then five star is like, you know, what the fuck? This is broken, right? I think that's kind of how it is. So a lot of the like, you know, big shots are going to be four stars, I would say. Yeah, like, Eskander is definitely vulnerable to, like, archers, assassins, and then anyone with crazy strong AoE NPs. They do have to be crazy strong AoE NPs, though. 
Because, like, Excalibur's not enough. Excalibur's not enough to, to kill enough dude. And Excalibur is pretty damn strong, so... But, like, imagine Bodica trying to fight Alexander the Great, right? Just no chance. I mean, just absolutely no chance, right? Or, like, um... Ushi even, right? I mean, what is she gonna do? Kill like three soldiers maybe, right? Because like each soldier in there is a servant with proper servant stats. And they even say some of them have higher stats than Alexander himself, right? So like, I mean, there's just no chance, right? Ushi is just completely boned and characters like Ushi, just absolutely no chance. Actually, I don't think Excalibur really will kill um, Alexander. Uh, I actually think it's a terrible matchup for, for Artoria because we already see that his chariot can offset it enough that he at least survives, so you're not going to just gank him. And then that's with Alexander not trying to dodge it. His chariot is really fast. If his objective... I, Excalibur is kind of an unimpressive NP to me in a lot of ways. I think it needs plot armor to actually be good. It's, it's anti-fortress. It is what its name implies, right? If the thing can't move, it's great. But it's super slow to use. Every single time she's ever used Excalibur, it takes quite a while to charge. And like, that's not good, right? And its blast radius actually isn't that big. That's the thing, it really isn't that big of a blast radius. So if Alexander is like, oh, I should dodge that, he, his chariot can easily, easily dodge it. Like, no problem. Uh, that's a huge problem. I mean, like I said, it really is anti-fortress, right? The shit needs to not be moving or not be particularly fast. Um, I think the reason it's like so impressive is just because the, the, the plot holds its hand all the time. Like, yeah, A double plus is a lot of damage, but it's a huge mana hog and it's incredibly slow. And uh, I, I also, if Alexander wants to, he can have so many servants in front of him that they can face tank it for him. And they've already said that it's not enough to, to like, you know, kill all of them though, to even destabilize the NP. So it's good, right? It's good, but my God, is it no A, uh, right? Like not even close. So I actually think Alexander, if he was going all out on Saber, she's boned. Because he was holding back against her a lot uh, when they fight in Fate Zero, so. Because he didn't he didn't see her as worthy uh, of going all out on. That's the thing, he didn't want, he, he was like, no, I need to deal with Gilgamesh, right? So he didn't want to waste his resources on her. Um, and she even think, in the book, the uh, I don't remember if this is in the anime, but in the book, she's kind of thinking through it. And she's like, yeah, I this is not good. She's like, if I have to deal with that NP, I don't think I can. Uh, she straight up thinks that, so. Yeah, I think she'd be pretty screwed. Now, in certain circumstances, I think she could kill him, right? Especially if he doesn't get his NP off. But honestly, his NP is shown to be a lot faster to use than Excalibur is, so it's not really good for her. Uh, like, Ar Artoria, I would say, is actually a classic example of a four-star, I would say. Where, yeah, she's certainly stronger than, like, Bodica and Ushi and, you know, that kind of thing. But it's not like... She doesn't have, like... She's got good stats, right? Um, she's very skilled. She's got okay skills, nothing, really nothing crazy though. And then she's got a nice NP, but that's it. She doesn't have any good defenses. She doesn't have, um, you know, clairvoyance. She doesn't have, uh, you know, runes to do, you know, hack stuff. You know, she's kind of like, she's like the ultimate uh, meat and potatoes servant, right? Like she's like very, very good basic servant, but she doesn't do anything super crazy above and beyond. If she had, um, uh, if she had, what do you call it, uh, Avalon, that would be a lot better. That would be like a lot, lot better. I would say Arthur's not a five star either because again, he's very similar to her. They have like all the same stuff. You know, they're skilled, they have good stats. They have a big nuke NP. Um, but uh, you know, it's not like a level and they don't have any good defenses. They don't, right? They don't have Avalon. Uh, I would say he's slightly better, but it's so slight. It's not enough to be a five star because he actually has a skill she doesn't have. They have all the same stuff except he has monster slaying where she doesn't. And that's actually good because you end up fighting things like, um, you know, Gilius' monster all the time. There's a lot of monster NPs out there and stuff. So that's actually good. And I would say his NP overall is a bit better than hers. You know, hers is more consistent. His peak's better, a lot better. But it's actually not too hard to peak. If you look up the seals, they're just not that hard to get off. Now they might retcon it and make them harder. But like right now, I would say, because his seals aren't that hard to get off, that overall his Excalibur is better, but it's still a thing you have to deal with, right? Like there's still, you're not, you're not gonna get the super maximum Excalibur all the time, not at all. You're gonna get like the medium one. Now the, his medium one is better than like her A double plus one, right? So I, that's why I would say overall, 
his is still better. But sometimes you're gonna get the fucking like B rank one, right? So it's not it's not universally better. It just isn't. Um, so yeah, I I would say they're very com very comparable to each other. They're very similar. I think Arthur's slightly better, but I don't think it's enough to be five star. I think he's you know a very very good four star. I think he'd be a very very good four star. But yeah, I don't think he'd be a five star. Again, if you look at the fives, because look at Karna, right? Let's look at Karna's. I think Karna's a really fair, like, gatekeeper to five star, right? So his NP is, you know, consistently going to be better than, uh, like, Excalibur. It's better than Artoria's Excalibur, and Arthur's might be better sometimes, maybe, hard to say. Um, but his is just, you know, EX rank all the time, huge blast radius, uh, super, super powerful, you know, uh, Siegfried, uh, or Zig with his upgraded NP and then the command spell and all that, still couldn't stop it. Not even close, right? No chance. So crazy strong NP. Uh, and then he's also got armor that is so good, right? Lowers damage by 90%, even if it's like internal damage. That's so good. Uh, mana burst, really good stats, fucking laser eyes. Uh, other NPs like, uh, you know, the throne one that is really strong if you need to save mana and stuff like that. Although I will say one thing bad about Karna is he, he is, my God, he's a mana hog. That's a huge, uh, negative but still like karna is way stronger than artoria all right like it just it's i think he's a really fair gatekeeper you kind of need to be in that power range or above i think to be an easy five star and i would say like achilles is in that power range they even say that in the book it's, it's unclear who would win if they fought um and uh, like ku uh, I, although i think is pushing it like ku may be four star maybe not five star but he's pushing it but i think ku is kind of in that karna range because his defensive stuff is very good with his runs and the auto activate one and then bulg is insanely scary and he's he's more skilled than karna and he's faster than karna right so ku has a shot at, at five star because i really do believe that if there's no plot armor no master nerfing you ku is absolutely better than artoria and arthur like absolutely better uh and he's being so fucking nerfed in fates tonight it's absurd Ar 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 artoria is not holding off gilgamesh for 12 hours okay this this is not happening um yeah, Ku's toolkit is just very, 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 very well-rounded, and, um, you know, Bulg is just, like, Jesus, it's good. It's super low mana, it's super fast, and it just barely hacks, kills a lot of things. Um, I mean, the seals aren't really a retcon, they're kind of just, like, talking out of their ass with Excalibur these days. Um, I, 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 I Nasu's just not a good writer, I, I'm sorry. Like, they're, they just talk out of their ass with Excalibur so much. It's so unclear, um, like, it just, none of it even makes sense. Half the shit, they, like, Arthur's stuff all makes sense. Artoria's stuff just doesn't, doesn't make sense. They contradict themselves all of the time. Um, and it's, I, you can't even say it's like a retcon because they haven't gone back and changed it. That's the thing, so it's not a retcon. I, I, honest to God, I don't know what the fuck is going on with Artoria's Excalibur. It just doesn't make sense. Um, the best logic you can go with is like, it obviously is different in extra and a lot of things are, are, are different in extra. And so that, that part's not an issue. All the crazy space bullshit it does in extra, that's fine. Because fucking Bulg in extra turns into a skyscraper, right? It, it, it doesn't normally do that. You know, most things in extra are really different and off the walls. So that's not really a problem. But like a lot of the stuff they say about uh, Excalibur is just, it, it's just contradiction. It's just contradicting itself. So it, you can't really say, well, this one's true and this one's not. You don't, you don't get to do that. You know, that's, that's up to Nasu. Um, so I just go by the character material books. That's generally the best you can do. And by the character material books, um, you know, in its normal state, like if you summon her in face tonight or whatever, it's not sealed, right? And it's just A double plus. But then, oh, just kidding, behind the scenes, it also has an anti-alien thing that makes it stronger. That's pretty much what it says right now. And then for some reason in FGO, it's sealed and it's not a double plus like it is in Fate Stay Night. It's not, you know, you summon her with like a rank or something like a, a vanilla, right? So it's like, what the, f it's just what the fuck, right? I, I just, I, I don't even, but yeah, I would say right now you just go by the character material book and then the anti-alien stuff behind the scenes seems fine because it doesn't contradict anything. And the stuff that does contradict stuff, it's probably just going to be LOL, alternate universes, different timelines, because you know what else contradicts itself to the point that it doesn't make any sense? The moon. Right? The moon doesn't make sense in, in, in the Nasuverse anymore. It has contradicted itself so much, but the old stuff can't not be canon anymore. And unlike Excalibur, they've actually been asked about this and they explained it with just LOL timelines. Right? So like, and the moon is a lot more important than Excalibur 
to the overall story and it contradicts itself a lot more than Excalibur does. And what they did with the moon was just LOL timeline. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, it's Tsukihime stuff, uh, sometimes extra stuff, but you know, it, it, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. And it, they just explained it with stupid multiverse nonsense. So I have to imagine if Nasu was ever sat down and asked about like the massive contradictions, he would just say the same thing. It, it's just that that's always throw out when they what, write themselves into a corner. So I don't, I don't fucking know. But even if she has a stronger Excalibur, I still don't think that makes Artoria a five star because she still doesn't have all the awesome stuff Karna does, right? Um, so it's just, I, I think both Arthur and, and Artoria would be four star because uh, just consistently in Kidu, Gilgamesh, Romulus, uh, Karno, all those things are just stronger than them. And they have all these other abilities that they just, that they, Arthur and, and crew just doesn't have, you know, it's just not there. Uh, okay, it's almost boss time here. I kind of messed up. I didn't, I did not have used my NP there. I was not really paying attention. Well, we'll get a lot of NP right here at least. Yeah, Nasu has a habit of, whoops, I uh, didn't really think that one out. Uh, different world lines. Okay, well, I can't actually NP here. I'm uh, just off. Do I want a battery for Hans? I'm gonna whiff super hard on Jalter, but that's probably fine. Do I want to Hans and yeah, I'm gonna Hans in third here to get scars to try to crit next turn. <laughs> Jolter's probably a four star, I would say. See, I, I, she is, I think, better than regular Jonah Arc in a lot of ways. She's just got a lot of new abilities that are like, that's really good. Like she has an EX rank charm for dragons and they don't have to be literally a dragon. They just have to have the dragon attribute, right? Uh, and cause it's EX rank, you'll get, you should get around magic resist decently well. Now all the people that obviously have skills that counter charm, it's not gonna work on, but uh, that, that's pretty good, right? And you have that on top of, um, she's able to like do more melee stuff better. Her NP, I would say, I don't know if it's better. It's hard, hard to quantify, but it's a really good offensive NP. But she obviously doesn't have the really good shield and all that. Um, Johans is so weird because in a lot of circumstances, he's actually super weak. He needs to be motivated. He needs a lot of time. And then it, it depends on what his master actually wants, right? Uh, here's a good example, right? Hans enabled Kiara to be the main antagonist in CCC. But that was a lot of specific circumstances, a lot of time. And then, and I would say without, I don't think it's really plot armory. Uh, I think it's pretty believable that like in Foxtail, that Suzuka just wipes the floor with uh, Hans and Kiara because I mean, what are they gonna do, right? They don't have a bunch of time to prep anymore. Um, Kiara can't fight head on, <laughs> like, and no, neither can Hans, right? And like uh, Suzuka or not, you know, she's obviously gonna just murder them, right? And Suzuka's no five star, right? Um, so that, that's like a real problem with Hans. There's just a lot of circumstances. You'll just get bulldozed and you can't really do anything. Uh, so yeah, Hans is really weird. So I, I'd say he's like three star, I would say, if you're gonna be like plot accurate, I, I think that's fine. Caligula is so weird because his, his NP basically makes everyone just go insane and share his insanity. And it makes it so they're, uh, they become so unskilled because they're so crazy, they can't use their own skills in NPs anymore. But some people are immune to it. Right, uh, however, if you get a, a Grail War where no one's immune to it, which certainly could happen, he can just instantly win the entire Grail War like that. Because if everyone else is unable to use their skills in NPs, he'll obviously defeat them as long as his master can like control them well enough. Right, um, and he, he's got really good stats and he's got, he's got pretty good skills, honestly. Um, hard to say how skilled he is. They don't really talk about that much. But um, yeah, the Nero Simp stuff's kind of lame, but what are you gonna do? But yeah, he's pretty scary. I would say four star though. I mean, he's, he doesn't do anything like as broken as like Gilgamesh and, and, and all that. And there are things that can counter him pretty easily. Like if, if another big boy's in the war, he's probably not gonna win. So that, that makes me say he's not really a five star. 
What if he gets Podoku's master? That would be so bad. Because she would hate him so much. Because she's like super sexist and, and dumb. And at least like Protoku's awesome enough to like offset that somewhat. Where, um, oh my god, Caligula would not. That would be like the. That is such a bad team up. I, I never even would have thought of that, but that would be so bad. Like, they would be dead so quickly. Like, I. Th that is just the. I, that's like the worst compatibility ever. First off, because this is actually a thing. If your compatibility with your servant is bad, your mana efficiency goes down, right? You, you nerf them generally. Um, so Caligula's ability to operate would just be terrible. She would hate his guts so much, right? And then she would have absolutely no ability to work with him whatsoever. And then also she's an idiot. And then Caligula is also an idiot. So he's not gonna be, be able to give her any advice as to not be such a goddamn idiot. And even if he could, she wouldn't listen to any of it, right? So they're, they're just gonna die. They're, they'd probably die on the first night, like just immediately. Like they're just instantly dead. Um, because she would have actually died on the first night of Fate Prototype if it wasn't for like plot armor. Like really, the decisions she makes are so stupid, they would have instantly gotten eliminated if there wasn't plot armor. Like really. Um, also, you know, Protoku being really, really, really t high tier servant, uh, you know, helps too. But uh, my god, she's a... So for, for those who don't know, her, her genius strategy um, is... So she doesn't like men, and but she specifically wants to summon a man. So... This is a good idea. Um, and then, so, and she's so afraid. Uh, so she's she doesn't like men and she doesn't like servants, by the way. So it's not like a, being a female servant's gonna really help. She really doesn't like servants. And uh, it's because of Hohenheim, right? Because Hohenheim, uh, like when she was a kid, her, her father summoned Hohenheim and he acted all nice and all loyal and, and real friendly to her when she was a kid. And then he betrayed the shit out of them and murdered her dad and killed him in like the worst way and then cursed her and uh, and and gave her the good old mage talk, you know, that, you know, you know how Magus are. And he's like, you know, proud of being a shit bag, essentially. And so now she just thinks servants are all like these just evil, horrible things that are all like that. Um, and that she thinks men are all like that and all that good stuff. Right. So she, she's, you know, she's not easy to work with. And anyway, so her, because she's scared of servants and uh, she's afraid of, of being portrayed again, like how Hohenheim betrayed her dad, she is scared that Protoku is going to betray her. So her genius plan is to seal his NP so he can't use it. So he's less likely to be able to like kill her, which is weird because he could definitely kill her without it and that would unseal his NP. So I don't, I don't even know what the logic is because if you seal his NP, you, that is going to increase the chances of your servant not liking you, right? So it would increase the odds of them betraying you. So they kill you, get their NP back, and go team up with a different master, right? So she's kind of just an idiot. But anyway, so her genius strategy is seal my servant's NP. Um, and then, this is the kicker, and then actively send him out to, to try to find other servants. And by the way, and, and to fight them. She tells them to go out there and like fight, you know, really get aggressive, right? And by the way, the first servant he runs into is Proto Gilgamesh. And the only reason he doesn't die is because Proto Gilgamesh is not very interested in the war and he doesn't he doesn't care to fight Proto Ku. And Ku is even like, thank fuck, because this guy's scary, right? Um, so Proto uh, Gilgamesh is just not interested in, in fighting. But if he was. Proto, uh, Proto Ku would just die, right? Like, it's, well, that's that, because Proto Ku is super strong, but he doesn't have his NP, right? So no chance against Gilgamesh, right? So she literally got bailed out um, by by just you know plot, right? Just absolute plot nonsense. So yeah, she's one of the worst masters that's ever existed. I think if she summoned Caligula, they would instantly die. Just and Caligula would be so weak. Like their compatibility would be so bad. Like that is just the worst fucking. I'm trying to think, is there anything that's worse than that? Um, let me think. So, it, male, it's got, it needs to be male, uh, untrustworthy, at least on a surface level. Um, and then not, they, they also need to be illogical, right? So they're not gonna like sort this shit out. Let me, let me see here. What, uh, Shinji, well he's not a character. Caesar would be pretty bad. Caesar, but the thing is Caesar actually does have good tactics though. So, you know, he's gonna 
try to co he's gonna try to deal with the fact that his master is an idiot making bad strategies and stuff, right? He actually is smart, even though he doesn't act like it on the surface. Okay, Lu Bu's really bad. I think most Berserkers are bad. Oh, Columbus, that's terrible. Holy shit, that's terrible. Uh, but yeah, I don't think Caesar's actually the worst. Aggravain's terrible. <laughs> uh, the thing is, if Aggravain gets summoned after, uh, it's hard to say. I, I suspect if Aggravain gets summoned, he's summoned after learning about Artoria. So it's not that bad, but that's still bad though, because he, on, on the surface level, he's not trustworthy. Even though ironically, he's actually very trustworthy. Like Bedivere even says that, that like he was the most loyal. He was the most, like uh, he was like the glue that held Camelot together. So, but on the surface, he's not trustworthy. Like just looking at him, you get like fucking Hohenheim vibes. I mean, seriously, right? He, he's just got that no nonsense, kind of servant thing going on. He's got the longer hair and everything. Like, he really does give off like that no nonsense Hohenheim kind of vibe. So yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that's, and, and then the, you know, the whole woman thing. So uh, yeah, holy shit, that's bad. So yeah, that's a really bad one. Um, Let's see, I don't know if that's the worst though. I don't know if that's the worst. Again, especially if it's him after learning about Artoria, it's probably not the worst. Dumas is horrible. Holy fuck, that's terrible. That might be the worst. That might actually be the worst. Now he is very tactical, but he's got nothing to work with. Right, like who's he gonna give his NPs to? Her? Yeah, good luck. That that's pretty bad. That's that's pretty. Although the oh, the one thing, and this is in Fate and in real life. The, I actually love that Fate Strange Fake did this. Um, so in real life, uh, Dumas is very boisterous. You know, uh, you know that that kind of thing. You know, like that like how he is in in Fate Strange Fake, right? Very uh, a real character, right? But. Pretty much everyone that knew him said that if you actually got to know him, you know, that was, you know, kind of a, an act. He was like super nice, super loyal to his friends, right? Like just a really good person deep down, right? Even though he was very boisterous and, and all that. Um, and, and they do that in Face Strange Fake as well. So he's probably intelligent enough to try to, you know, make it work. Uh, but I, I don't think it would. Uh, and again, he's a caster, like... Um, Hohenheim, and uh, he can't fight head on particularly well, as far as we can tell. That, that's that's pretty bad. That's definitely one of the worst. But what we really need is a, a guy that's like a womanizer that's deep down not a, a, a good person, right? That's what we need. Uh, and then also an idiot, like because Dumas is not an idiot. Uh, them being dumb, because then your master and servant are both dumb. No one's gonna bail this this out. That's like the ultimate worst. So we need stupid. Uh, not necessarily that great of a person deep down, and then definitely a guy. And if they're a womanizer, that's not- that's definitely not gonna help. Um, yeah, I I Izo, unfortunately, I hate to say this, uh, Izo's a pretty bad, uh, pick there, because he's not a ta tactician by any means. Um, no, Mori deep down, uh, is very, 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 very loyal. Actually, Mori would probably sort her out. I'm not gonna lie. That it, he he could probably get that ship on on course. Um, yeah, Mori's uh, is fine, honestly. Uh, Izo would probably kill her. Uh, unironically, I think Izo would kill her. I think she would seal his NP because he, he's an assassin. He's at least smart enough to play nice for five seconds and then just like decapitate her with his bare hands, which he can definitely do. Um, so I, I think unironically Izo would kill her. Um, Napoleon is probably tactical enough that it's not the end of the world. It's still quite bad though. Like that's bad. Um, but he is a tactician and whatnot. So that's not the worst. Um, let me think. We gotta, we gotta find worse. Izo's pretty bad though. The thing about Izo is he's actually capable enough of maybe surviving after killing her, right? So he, he might be okay, but she's definitely not. Because we, we need a disaster, right? We need someone that's probably not going to betray her, but is still an idiot. That's that's the real thing. He needs to not betray her, be an idiot, be a guy, right? Um, um, well, the thing is, his master is a piece of shit, though. I, Chet, I, I, I feel like Mori is really uh, misunderstood here. Like, big time. Like, uh, the reason, like, Mori is the way he is in, like, the, like, Koho Ace and Redline is because his master is Shinji. Right, and, and then in red line is you know it it he generally it, it's actually a, a testament to how bad his masters are when you read his um his like bio and stuff like he's actually outrageously loyal he would normally never even think about killing his master, um, 
Okay, let's see here. J Jason's pretty bad. Jason's pretty bad. He's weak. Um, yeah, wow. Jason's really bad. Not as much of a tactician as he would like to think. Um, yeah, Jason might be it. I think that might be the ultimate worst pair ever. I think they would lose every gra Grail War. I can't think of any circumstances where they could win. Like, that is just the... And their compatibility would be so bad that Jason's stats would get nerfed and all that. Um, Perseus depends. We don't really know what he's like because we haven't really seen him. Um, but yeah, well, no, I think Jason is about as bad as it gets because he's not that tactical. He's pretty weak anyway. He's a dude, kind of a, you know, flamboyant and all that. Womanizer and stuff to a degree anyway. Uh, that's really bad. Yeah, I think that is just, that is so shit. That is just absolutely shit. Uh, like fucking Shiro with, uh, Spartacus would be better because at least they have good compatibility. So Meph would be pretty bad too. But Neff would probably actually kill her and survive, so there is that. Where Jason wouldn't. I, I, I don't think Jason would portray her. Um, so that's really, really bad. Phantom's really bad, too. Phantom, Phantom might live, though. Um, but yeah, Phantom's actually atrocious. Phantom is, is actually atrocious. And he's not super tactical, either. So, uh, yeah, that's really bad. I don't think it's as bad as Jason, though, because Phantom is stronger than Jason, unironically. Okay, let's uh, get to doing some damage here. Fuck it, I'm just gonna throw my invulnerability out. Why am I doing this? 137, like, although it's got double damage resist, I don't think I needed to do that invulnerability there. I think that was a mistake. Well, too late now. Time to see numbers. I swear, if we win and we break this health bar, I'm not gonna be happy. Look, chat, let's, let's see. Can we find a master-servant combo that is worse than what we just described? So, because you would need a full war of people that are worse than that for her to have any chance. Even then, though, she's probably fucked because she's on a time limit, by the way. She's cursed by Hohenheim, so she'll die and turn into a zombie after a while. So she's, like, on the clock. So it's very difficult for her to win under any circumstance. Shiro and Emiya, that is pretty bad. But at least they're... So they're at least powerful to an extent. Depends on which Shiro we're talking about. But they have no compatibility, and they're gonna in instantly- do you, Like, do you realize if Shiro somehow summoned regular Emiya, they would just instantly start fighting each other, right? And Emiya also doesn't really care, so he wouldn't stay materialized afterwards. He wouldn't give a fuck. So they're just instantly going to die. They're, I, I, I can't even imagine- The only way that works is if they get summoned and there's some kind of, like, real threat that, that uh, you know, Emiya cares about enough to put up with Shiro's stupidity. To, to like try to deal with that threat. Like it's like a threat to humanity or something. That's the only world they don't instantly die. Karna and Kiara. That's really bad, but they, they're really, at least Karna's really strong, right? Um, what's probably worse is like Buddha and Kiara because they have no compatibility. They hate each other and they have abilities to screw each other over. Although I guess if it's human Kiara, then she wouldn't have any of those abilities. Actually, if it's human Kiara, though, then she's not the worst thing on the planet. And then Buddha would probably just sort her out, and then she'd be like her therapist self, and there probably wouldn't really be a problem there. Oh, Kire, not Kiara. Okay, that's... No, that's fucking terrible. But again, Karna is really, really powerful. And Kire is not the type to try to just kill Karna because he... He would just try to manipulate Karna. Oh, no, that wouldn't work because Karna can see through lies immediately oh god so uh wow that's terrible for kotamine kotamine would be dead immediately <laughs> holy shit do you realize how fast he would be dead because um like uh karna's thing is like you absolutely cannot lie at all he sees through that shit immediately and i don't think anyone has ever lied as much as kotamine right that's really bad I mean, can you guys stop saying all of the names that sound exactly the same? I'm not even blind. This is just all these names sound exactly the same. I don't see... Why would that be bad, though? I don't see why he would have a problem with Karno, really. I don't, I don't think that's that big of an issue. Like, we, we need we need catastrophe here. Like, we need absolute catastrophe here. Mana Hog? I guess that's true. Yeah, he would just kill his master in, like, five seconds. If he's got the if he's got the bugs, he could live for like maybe a day. Cause the thing is, Lance lost a mana hog too, and he, he lived a while. That's that's not that's not as bad as you might think. Cause like Karna is basically a lancer that has the mana requirements of a berserker. 
and uh, Lancelot was a pretty big mana hog, so that's not that's not that bad. I mean, it's bad. If he doesn't have the worms, though, he's instantly dead. Um, that's not that bad, though. That's that really is not that bad. And the thing is, Gilgamesh will will uh, survive on his own, so his master is irrelevant. So that, that, that's not gonna that's not gonna be it. Bazette and Mev, that's pretty bad. But at, like, they're, at least they're competent enough. Um, they would just have to not want to kill each other. Um, but they're both competent enough that they would definitely be better than Jason and, uh, Protocoo's master. I don't even remember how to say her name. Um, like, that's bad. That's, like, that's just awful compatibility. Like, Mev's stats would be nerfed into the ground. Her NP would be, like, dysfunctional as fuck. There'd be so many problems. Um, but, it, you know, it, I, it's, it's definitely it better than Jason. Uh, like, it, it definitely... Uh, let's see. I, I, I don't know if I can think of something worse. I mean, Kodamina and Karn is really bad because they'll probably both just die immediately, but, uh... Medea's original master in Penth. That's pretty bad. Um, that would definitely result in them both dying. Uh, that's like the best you can do is just them both dying on their own, which I guess that would allow Jason to win by default. But, um, Rin and Vlad, I don't think that'd be a problem, really. Like she's she's proper enough of a master to like do the tip the the kind of proper master servant relationship that you're supposed to do as a Magus. So I don't think it'd be a problem. Uh, I don't think it'd be like great, but they whoop everyone else's ass that we're we're mentioning here. Um, Angra and Shinji that would that they just die. Uh, no offense to Angra, but I mean he could probably beat Jason. Could Angra beat Jason? if Jason is also being nerfed into the ground by horrible compatibility with his master. Probably. I, I, I would say probably. It might be close, right? I, it, it, it's kind of like a slap fight, right? Like they're both so bad, but uh, I, he could probably do it. Maybe on like a really unlucky day. Koizuki and Lee is actually really interesting. They would probably be fine though. I don't think they have like god tier compatibility, but I think they could make it work. I don't. I think Kozuki probably wouldn't give a shit, so they probably wouldn't do anything. But um, they would probably be fine. Like it's really hard to have a combo as bad as Protoku's master and Jason. I, I really do think that's a master class disaster. I mean, what's another? Real oh, of course, it's over after you break the first health bar. Um. What's another... Start with the master. We need another master that's just dog shit. Right? Um, Shinji. Shiro, honestly. In most timelines, Shiro's a disaster. We got Shinji, Shiro... Um, let me think. Who else is a disaster? There's a lot of masters out there. Who else is a, is a complete shit show? Uh, yeah, you're not you're not wrong. Uh, Ryosuke, I would say his name. He's pretty bad. Uh, very hard to work with. Like crazy as fuck, doesn't have uh, his own mana supply and all that. That's that's definitely bad. A Stolfos master kind of depends. Like not great, but she's at least a, pro a normal master enough to try to use like normal like master tactics and stuff. But she's like sadistic and kind of like an, an idiot. Um, she's not the worst. She's not good, and it, it really depends on what she summons, right? There are things she could summon that she'd probably get along with. Um, Let's see. Yeah, we, we need a disaster master here. Jack's master's not great, but she's not as definitely not as dumb as, as Protocu's master. Waver and Columbus is pretty bad, but um, Waver's competent enough and Columbus is... They, they, you know, they might not get along in any way, but if they're attempting to get the job done and just you know put up with each other... So I, still, so I guess that's the damage cut is his barrier here. But anyway, you know, they're competent enough. They wouldn't be that disastrous. Certainly bad, though. Isn't Spartacus's master just one of the generic ones that is, like, trapped that we never really see? Am I forgetting something here? Those masters are actually detailed a little bit. But most of them aren't, like, super known. I think one of the better ones to work for a disaster is, uh, um, Gilles de Ray's master. I would say his name. That is such a fucked up name. 
Ryusuke or Ryusuko, whatever the fuck. Um, let's see. So he needs somebody that is obviously not mana efficient, not a mage, right? Because mages sometimes can figure the mana out on their own. And then that is not going to see eye to eye with his murder habits, but then not necessarily, but then they can't be like a pragma they can't be pragmatic like Kuritsugu, right? Um, let's see. Karna's up there. He would definitely kill him though, but then he'd probably fade away. Um, I mean, is that the ultimate failure? Is just the master and servant get along so badly that they try to kill each other and then they also can't survive without each other and they, that's that? Atalante would probably just try to... Atalante is actually okay because she has uh, independent action. So she would just kill him without even thinking about it and then use independent action to find another master. And then some lucky master gets two servants. So uh, now that's risky because you might find a shit master that won't trust a rogue servant and that kind of thing. But that's not that bad. Gwen, um would definitely kill him. And then he's not mana efficient, so he would probably just fade away. So yeah, that that would uh, that would do it. He would kill him immediately, though. He'd just see it as like the, the duty to justice. <laughs> that's that. Um, you know, maybe he gets lucky and finds another master, but... That's almost too easy, though. When they're that disastrous, right? It's like too easy. Because, like, so many servants would just kill him. And he can't defend himself either. So it's not... And then, like, all of those then can potentially go on and find another master. Because, like, Jason and What's-Her-Face are just so doomed. Like, yeah, they, they're probably not going to try to kill each other. But their performance just could not be any worse. They have no strategy, no stats, no compatibility on any level. Gilgamesh probably would not kill him. Probably not, no. It depends... I guess it depends on which Gil. Um, because Gil doesn't need a master at all. Um, so if it's like, a, it depends on like, I guess it depends on like where he's summoned. If it's like CCC Gil, right? Where he's like happier and stuff, he would probably just kill him. Um, but if it's like modern day and he's summoned on like regular modern day and stuff, he probably wouldn't. He would probably just uh, find it interesting to observe. I don't know. He might just find him to be such a mundane, common criminal, though. Because um, he sees through people, like, so easily. He, he, he may not be interested at all, actually. Because to, to Gil, he probably is really boring. Like, like just to him, it's just generic gen genocidal maniac. Like, and those are a dime a dozen from his perspective. Um, so he might just kill him because he's bored and then go off and do whatever the fuck. I don't know what the fuck Enkidu would do. I I'm honestly not sure. I, I, I don't know. That that's, that's a really hard one to imagine. Well, you gotta understand, Gil didn't treat people badly with Enkidu around very much. That's like the whole thing is when Enkidu kind of sorts him out. Because the servant version of Gil is kind of a hodgepodge of his whole character. You know, he starts off h horrible and then becomes very wise and, you know, reasonable as time goes on. And the servant version is kind of all of it in one place, right? And then depending on circumstances and then grail juice or no grail juice and, and all that kind of stuff kind of affects, like, you know, which way he is. Um, but, like, for Enkidu's own life, you know, Gil is... A lot more reasonable, a lot quicker, right? And even in like Fate Strange Fake, Gil is a lot more reasonable um, throughout, which you'll see, I guess, as the anime progresses. And it's because of Enkidu, he kind of becomes his, you know, better self again. Because what makes Gil such a, a piece of shit in a lot of the stories is because he, um, he's and the, uh, Natsu has said this multiple times. It's because he's summoned into. Like the, the modern era, and he hates the modern era because humans are just like worthless pieces of shit. Most of them are lazy. Most of them have no purpose. Um, you know, society is in like a state that he he detests, and that makes him like uh, uh, not very uh, charitable, right? I'll put it that way. But when he's summoned into like timelines and eras and stuff, that it's not like that. He's way more like uh, you see him in like Babylonia, right, or in CCC. But then, when if Enkidu is around, it kind of sorts Gil out, right? It makes him his like nicer self. Uh, also, his master can you know affect things as well. So, Gil's weird.
Kuritsugu plus Angra, that would just never work. Uh, that's definitely a bad one. Like that, that they are on such different wavelengths. Angra is actually not very easy to work with, to be honest. And it's pretty tough because he's not a very powerful servant, so... I don't know what's happening in the story right now. We had shield thing with, with Brutomart. I don't know what happened there. I guess we left? I don't know if we... I really don't know what happened with Brutomart there. Now we're like arguing on a roof or something. Edmund has been in your shadow all along. Unable to communicate much. So something's like disrupting your connection to Edmund right now, I guess. Oh, hi, Max. Yeah, Angra is just really bizarre character-wise, and he's not very powerful, so... Wait, what you talking about, Ace? What is going on right now? Oh, Gil's independent action? Yeah, he always has independent action. It just becomes stronger uh, with the Grail Juice. But Gil is one of the most independent servants of all time because he has the natural archer independent stuff, but then Gate of Babylon is implied to have a bunch of bullshit inside of it that can allow him to uh, materi keep stay materialized. Because not, not only in Fate Stay Night does he say that he can stay materialized without Kodamine's help, but he can keep Artoria materialized on his own. And she doesn't have independent action. And it's not even hard to figure out, you know, it's like, of course there's some bullshit in Gate of Babylon. Uh, I mean, Gate, I guess some people just don't realize how much bullshit has been confirmed that's inside of Gate of Babylon. So I don't think Gil has like any issues with mana whatsoever. Uh, and most of his NPs don't even take mana to use because they're real. They're not from the Throne of Heroes, so. Yeah, Gil's fine. Doesn't he could not have independent action and it wouldn't even matter. Independent action just makes it even easier. So Brita March still has shield. By fire be purged. Clearly not working. So chat, am I correct in assuming that Brita Mart has some kind of barrier and Jalter's genius strategy to try to get through it is just keep hitting it with fire over and over? And uh, hope it works eventually, even though it hasn't worked I I any of the times. Yes, yeah, I kind of figured. Yeah, punch harder. <laughs> yeah. Edmund doing something, I presume. So has Edmund been in our shadow, like, when you say this whole time, do you mean this whole time or just in this singularity? I have to imagine a Antonio is definitely um, being more tactical here. That looks pretty cool. Is Edmund going to do some uh, Edmund things here? Damn, we don't have the music. I assume there's something going on here. The fuck? Did Edmund just get stabbed when he was getting ready to smack Brittomart by fucking Avenger Ushi? That's so- that is so random. I guess she is an Avenger though. I'm confused. Well then why is she attacking Brittomart? Oh, so somehow Edmund summoned her? I'm confused. And then, uh, is she gonna get rid of this? This is strange. Not what I was expecting Edmund to do. That's that's an oddly specific ability. I'm guessing she got rid of the barrier. 
Also, yeah, why was she able to get rid of it? Glorious. Oh, napalm steel, uh huh. Buff removal, uh huh. Berries can never compare to katanas folded a thousand times. Is that how it works, chat? If you fold the katana enough times, you just fold up Lost Belt 6 and it's dealt with? Yeah, first. Uh, Should have brought more weebs to Lost Belt 6 than him. Huh? I guess we're gonna see a lot of Avengers here, huh? Can we actually fight the boss now? Um, interesting face to do this on, but hold on chat. I need to AFK real quick. I need to get water and I need to get a breathing thing. So hold on. I like oxygen. Good. Yeah, what is she, five, by the way? Okay, I'm back. All right, chat, blurt it out. What's your favorite master? It can be F go. It can be Fate Zero. You know, whatever. Games. Books. Don't matter. Yeah, it'd probably Sissy Go for me too. Uh, wow. Why are so many people saying Sissy Go? Do I attract a certain crowd? That's insanity. Jesus, I, I am, I am, I mean, he is awesome, I, I agree, but like, I was not expecting that. My god. That was an absolute landslide. I mean, there was a decent amount of Wadim, and uh, we got a little bit of Cadoc in here. Got some Bazette, I mean, Bazette is a good one. My god, that was so much just to go. Yeah, he's definitely my favorite. Uh, a bunch that I like, but yeah, he's he number one. All right. Yeah, I was expecting a bit more variety than that. Surely we're just fighting now, right? So is that Chaldea, the Chaldea version? Because this is, you know, not Brito Mart, obviously, because this is the mom.
You're gonna have to be more specific when you say fake assassin at this point because um yeah, that used to be Kojiro. That, that that can be a lot of things. Like, do you mean zealot? Because her master's the um, vampire guy who wants to uh, summon Ort. Although I'm not sure he still wants to summon Ort because of the zealot thing, but um, that's the whole shtick. Uh, what shall we use? We just used jo uh, Jolter, but that wasn't a real boss fight. So we could use her again and actually like test her out or we do something completely different. Let's use her one more time because that was not a real, that was not a real boss fight. And then we'll try someone else. I kind of hate this boss, oh boy. Is this like actually a boss though? If it is, it'll have to be the first thing I make a video on, on my uh... Man, it might be a minute though before I can really um... I feel like uh, I got a lot of real life stuff to do. Yeah, this is why I'm retiring. Um, it's like, I just, I don't know if I have time, man. I got a lot of stuff I gotta do in real life. Um, and then I wanna play Dragon's Dogma. So, we'll see. I'll, I'll do what I can. I'm going to make videos for this story but maybe not as timely as I normally would. Just cause uh, yeah, it's gonna be hard to keep up with right now. Yeah, 888 for support has to be in the front row. I'm not really retiring from FGO, I'm retiring from working. Uh, cause I'm gonna be able to soon. I've, I've, I've thought about though getting just a regular ass job again even though I don't need to, um, just to like save up a bunch, but I, I don't know, we'll see. I'm, I'm not 65 yet, no, but uh, I can retire early just because I own land. <clears throat> Let's see, I mean, Chen Gong's fine. I wonder if there's gonna be debuffs. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I should be able to essentially retire. I mean, I'm still going to stream and all that. You know, uh, it might be lower priority sometimes. But, um, you know, I'm still going to stream. I'll still make money from that. But I don't, I'm not going to need to, like, really worry about bank much anymore. Probably in a few months. But it depends on how long it takes to sort a few things out. But yeah, I don't, I, I'm not going to quit FGO or, you know, making videos and stuff. Absolutely not. I love making videos. I'll, I'll probably actually make some more, like, unique stuff now that I won't be as, like, pressed with uh, with that kind of thing, like, with money and time and all that. But in this, right now, though, I I'm really pressed on time just because I'm trying to work on a lot of stuff in real life, so. Yeah, I'll probably make some more Grand Blue videos, and you know, maybe some Gundam stuff. But yeah, uh, we're not, we're not deleting FGO. Like, that's not, that's not happening. Maybe just defensive stuff, honestly. The boss is probably going to be AoE, I would think. Don't say it, chat. Whoops, I like, never use that. It's OP as fuck, but uh, it's kind of why I don't use it. All right, well, I figure there's some gimmicks that need to be learned here. And normally I'd be like really jumping on making FGO videos right now, but you know, I want to stream for fun and then I, I just I need to take some time and deal with some some stuff Especially because uh, me and Tusk got sick. There was a bunch of uh, real-life stuff we were supposed to do And uh, we had to put that off so 
Yeah, the videos might be slow for a little bit. Still has double resist. I don't even. Are we supposed to like use her to uh, get rid of it or something? Cause she has an effect on attack, the extra attack. If it is, then um, well, this is an opening hand certainly. In before, she's got a gimmick where she gets the entire deck no matter what. Cause in fucking Jalter is so pointless here. Well, let's see what happens here. Yep, she does seem to have a way of getting rid of... I guess extra attack uh, gives you stun. Nope, she... Wait, how? I guess the first hand is deck lock to her and then it shuffles and it's normal. That is my uh, assumption here. Kind of whack. <laughs> She's cheating. Wait, does she really have more cards in the deck? That's kind of an odd gimmick if that's the case. No idea? Okay, so chat's just bullshitting. I'm assuming she always gets the first hand and then it goes to normal. Didn't know Brittle Mart was Genji, but uh, sure. I can probably throw this out right now. So I'm probably not gonna need it. So I don't know why we brought Jolter considering the way they, uh, they're setting this up. And before quick charge. Something on attack, buff removal, oh God. They love doing that to try to fuck with like the meta supports. So I should just bring buffers. Like, if these two are buffing her, I could probably just kill the boss. Um, although I needed to get rid of the shield again, apparently. So something applies a trait which gets rid of one of the shields, and then I think extra attacking stuns the boss. The little, uh... Confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's buff removal on attack, it looks like, or something. Actually, that one didn't remove the taunt, though. Why you gotta do that? Messing me up, lady. Man, I should have brought buffers, though. I didn't think they were going to force you to use her like this. I'm trying to figure out what gets rid of the shield. I'm really not getting it. It's one of those things where I think you need to be able to read what the buff says on her. See, now I get it. Like, what? Well, I should have saved the NP, but, uh, oh well. It seems like you literally just support her, though, and you'll be fine. Okay, 
Yeah, let's just use the support when it does kind of seem like the case. Like, you could bring Hans, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, that budget quick support chat, you bring Hans and the budget quick support, um, and uh, there you go. Because we obviously have one of those. I won't do much if I NP, but fuck it. Yeah, bring Max Pulse Demon. Yeah, there you go. God, I want him added to the game. Chat, can I have an event where we get Maxwell's Demon, the um, the gunslinger that we don't know the name of, and then the Green Knight, and then the antagonist is Henry V, and then he's playable later. Sounds pretty good to me, chat. Green stop. Oh, oh, and then uh, give, um, because the new gunslinger's in, that means Billy's in the event, and so Billy gets an animation update. This, this, this makes sense. Sounding pretty good to me, chat. If, um, if Maxwell's Demon does get added, I would expect it to be Gouda Gouda or a Redline collab. That is the, the most likely. I guess extra attack here and then try to NP next turn. She is so busted in this fight. Why do you have a toilet paper roll on the front of your uh, outfit, lady? The, the fact that you can stun this boss with that is kind of busted. I don't know why the uh, why they did that. It's to show her superior hygiene to Genji. Uh, that makes sense. She does have a pretty cool NP, honestly. Like, pretty dope. Her animations in general, I, I would say, are pretty good. Like, what do you think, chap? Not quite dead yet. Is this the real fight? It is. And the only reason it's taking this long is because I didn't I didn't bring a team to just support her. If I had, we'd already won by now. Give me that 60% crit with the buster up. Come on, game. Damn it. That would have been so good. I think she's pretty cool. I just don't like her fashion. Like, my god. The fashion is so bad. Even with the double resist, I think at this point I just NP. Although you could save it to get the extra attack easier, but whatever. Yeah, it's in Ushi's soul to just have the worst fashion of all times. Her fashion's not so bad in uh, Melty Blood and like the Craft Essence. Or like the, um... Where she's like not... Her, her, her clothes aren't blendered, you know? That, those aren't so bad. Yeah, I know. Imagine using your own units. What a concept. Do I have to kill the trash mobs? Nope. That's barely going to be video worthy, but I'll do it. I'm 
Uh, obviously, that won't be the video, but uh, I will make a video for that. I suppose. Wait, who got a skin? I I'll try to incorporate some memes. It's, it's kind of hard, though, because the you kind of have to do the fight in such a specific way. Wait, is she not dead yet? Still trying the fire. Although, you can always bring Hans and make a meme out of, the, out of it that way. Chet, I can't believe that Jonah Arc has that special quick animation for uh, Caster, Gilles de I, I'm, I'm, They've never done that before. That's so strange. I'll take it, though. I mean, Britta Mart wouldn't be outstaying her welcome if she felt like an actual character, right? But she seems to be kind of like the Terminator without much character, I suspect, so. Well, this isn't the Brita Mart from Chaldea, and I don't even I don't even mean that as in like a Lost Belt version or something. It's her mom, apparently. But she doesn't seem to have a, a pretty she doesn't seem to have an integral part of the story. She's just like a generic gatekeeper for these seven trials. So it's not like there's no oomph here, right? She gets the shield as long as her feet are on the earth. So if you blow into the air, or uh, Ushi's uh, empty makes her airborne, crack in the armor, filter strikes her head and uh, head crack. She literally explodes. Oof. She's fine. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so I guess you're going to have like seven boss fights. And they'll always be at nighttime, I presume. And then daytime, it's undercover school days. arc. Yeah, that's what it seems like. I wonder if Ricky is going to end up being an antagonist this time. That would be unfortunate. Oh, Jesus. What is happening here? Why on earth would we- why these two characters, and what do they have to do with any of this? This is so random. Like, Foreigner and Alter Ego. Apparently he's like, generally not mean to kids, for one reason or another, so there's that.
Abby's asking Doorman about dreams. Tell her to ask Merlin instead. Well, you know, good luck with that one. Why are we seeing this? And what the fuck does Abigail have to do? Like, I'm so confused. Wonder if Abigail's gonna be in this later. It'd be kind of odd. Merlin doesn't really have a good track record with kids. I mean, look at how Artoria turned out. So, uh, maybe they're not gonna use regular Jonah Arc and she just got an animation update because... We shall see. The story might be kind of long though if you have to do all seven trials. You may have quite a ways to go. So they'll obviously introduce a lot of new characters and stuff as we go. Yeah, they could be building up for uh, the next order call, and that's probably a good idea, but I would have done that when you were back on the ship, but not just totally at random here. So why do we even go to this school? Like, why do we have to stay undercover? The show more Jolter in uniform. <laughs> uh huh. But what's what's the excuse they give, chat? I mean, I don't think they even added the school uniform as a costume, so, I mean... And they don't sell costumes for SQ or anything. Like, you'd think the costumes would cost 15 SQ instead of fucking in-game mats. Kind of weird, honestly. You'd probably get more costumes if they did that. Isn't that a really fair way of doing it, though? Because you can get free-to-play SQ, right? And that way, the company gets to get... You know, some people will wail well for them, right? And some won't. And they get some money, and then they can justify making more costumes. Yeah, like how Arknights does it. Why are you even here? Come on, game. Stop putting text prompts that slow down my skipping. I hate her. Also, how does this even work? I, I, I have a feeling whenever they explain how adult Da Vinci is being used as, like, you know, the NPC or whatever you want to call it in this whole brain thing. It's going to be so stupid. Like, it, it's it's going to be, like, so dumb, the reason why she's here. It's going to be some throwaway line. Yeah, where the fuck is Romani? Ridiculous. That would have been a way to add some some tension and stakes here. You have Romani. He's like the dad or something. Why is your hand like that? What are you doing? Jesus. Teenagers, man. Damn, his drip, though. Pretty good.
Hasn't been a lot of Mozart. I'm sure he'll show up again at some point though. That could be pretty cool, honestly. Give him an animation update, you fucks, man. This would be such a good time for it. And you could have a, maybe a big uh, Antonio Mozart shtick in the story. Mozart gets an animation update. That'd be so good. By the way, this is how you use the color red. Not like this. Like, this should obviously be black or purple, like Jesus Christ. You know I'm right. Don't you fucking roll your eyes at me. What is even happening right now? Why why are we going to school? I don't understand. Like, why do we need to play along with this nonsense? Every other Hassan is cooler than you. We need our diploma, obviously. I do have a feeling that he did get King Asan. We shall see though. She's dressed normally. You're not gonna get that as a costume, by the way. And if you do, they'll find a way to make it weird. Ain't none of these people getting costumes, chat. Keep those expectations way the fuck down. You think someone might be like, why are your eyes like that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. They probably would find a, a weird reason to make her shoes weird because um, changing shoes is actually really difficult for games like this and even 3D games because it changes your posture and your height and your stance and stuff, which affects your entire fucking body. So uh, if you notice, a lot of games will make it so whatever shoes they're wearing all match in terms of like height, everything, because it just affects the character so much and they can't be bothered to uh, like redo the skeleton work for that kind of thing. So that it, she, she will have weird shoes if they ever made a costume for her. When does Dragon Dogma come out? Oh my God, you're right. That's so soon, dude. Uh, I think it's like late as fuck tomorrow or uh, early the day after or something like that. It's soon though. I think it comes out uh, a little bit earlier th uh, than we thought just because of like Japanese time zone stuff. I'm super hyped for that though. It's tomorrow around now. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay. What I need to do is I need to like work my ass off all tomorrow and then try to just wrap that up and then uh, start streaming. So is, is it like 8.30? Uh, cause, or, or, you know, Eastern time or something like that? Or is it a bit like a bit before an hour, a bit after now? Cause I, what I'm probably gonna do is like set an alarm and like work until um wow chat we're not going to get a lot of fco videos i'll try to i'll try my best to get a video out tonight but holy fuck fco is going to be on the back burner for a bit i'll have to make a post on my youtube uh it's fine though like it's i don't think people care too much so it's not that big of a deal but good to keep people in the loop eight p.m for you i think okay So chat, last time I asked chat, I think we had agreed upon we were gonna make the pawn Ash, so we can say God damn it, Ash. But uh, does chat have any other ideas? Because right now I'm making like Saint George as the playable character. 
But sadly, you can't make St. George as well in Dragon's Dogma 2. And you might say, how? The character creator is so good. They just don't have the hair. Like, they had his hair in Dragon's Dogma 1, but they don't have it in 2. So I can still do it, but it's, it's not as good. But, um... If Chad has any ideas... I remember Chad had a few other, like, meme ideas that were pretty good, but I, I forgot a lot of them. I can't believe you won't stream school days, FGO. I know, right? I mean, I will. It's just gonna be on the back burner for a bit. Well, it's not supposed to be Jolter. That is Jolter. I mean, not all th this one, right, guys? Guys, this is Jolter, right? That's that's totally what she looks like. Oh, that one. There we go. She does have some, like, Sonic OC hair right now. I'd be very happy if Mori uh, was in this story, or in any story, really, but... You know, I wonder, chat, if I could yeet uh, Ushi in that one fight and use somebody else. It'd be a lot slower, I think, and it's not an interesting enough fight to do that. Okay, what are we fighting here? I'm kind of surprised there's not at least one costume here, though. Or, or maybe there is, and I just don't know, chat. Does anyone know? Like, if you beat the story, does somebody get a costume? But they're probably like, oh my god, the animation updates, that, that, that took all of our time. We couldn't possibly add something else. Mori is generally a menace. That's kind of how he is. Probably, well, I mean, there's kind of a, a week two because there's probably a second banner, but um, and I think Jolter's gonna get a raid up. But I don't, I don't know if they would do a costume then. I mean, may maybe. Yeah, they've done that kind of shit before, and like Morgan's costume was really late. Watch Mozart get it. With a no no animation update. So I guess the next trial is coming here. All these front-facing sprites, man. gonna be although maybe it's just trash mobs right now any max nope no max um hmm oh hey mark I know what to do here. Oh yeah, I need to actually get him to 108. I forgot I kept him at 107. Whoops, I could have been farming this whole time. Wouldn't that be exciting, chap? Chat, I really want Mori at 120, but I don't have... I, actually, I might have the coins. I need to go count. But then I have to actually farm XP. What's the, uh, what's the dream? What do I go with here? 
You gotta have that maximum, Mori. When in doubt, just throw Ishtar. And you can also use the Ishtar command code. Oh, uh, Antoinette, yeah. It sure took him a while to, uh, to do that one. Where's the generic 20% crit one? I have such a hard time finding that one. Just in case of debuff hell. There's the idiot, there we go. If, ha uh, if I had Antoinette Alter, I'm pretty sure I'd go with stage two. Guts is honestly not terrible for him, all things considered. There might be trash mobs. Man codes should update on their own. Chat, can we have Mozart's first anniversary craft essence? It's so good. Do that in an animation update. I'd give them money for that one, man. Like if that was 10 bucks, 15 bucks, maybe even 20 bucks, I'd, I'd buy that. Like, that shit's good, man. At least animations came back, though. I I saw a lot of people complaining about that, even on, like, the Japanese side of things. So I think they finally caved. They were like, yeah, we really can't. Because I think they were trying to just stop doing them, dude. <laughs> I really do. But I, I think enough people complained that uh, we're back in business. They're kind of shitty though, but you know, I'll, I'll take... The thing about shitty animation updates is at least their sprite quality is better, right? I love that guy's designs. Like he made Ort and all that, it's great. But I specifically like the one for him where he's the black suit with like the green glowing stuff and all that. Like the wolf design, super cool. Yeah, Fergus, that'd be cool. Oh, why are we fighting her for? We're like training or some shit. Would have brought, um, I'm sure hit if I knew there. Kind of a risky opening turn here. I don't have the best hand. I guess I didn't need a star absorb because of the evade. I didn't really think of that. I don't know, maybe this is the first video. The other fight is just not that great. Man, this is a really rough open air. I'm just gonna reset. Honestly, that's just super bad the way all my damage is in the other hand and I don't have sure hit or anything. This was my main account. I would maybe use Calamity Jane. So rare to find a good use for her. To be a fun time for it.
I'm too lazy to put Pierce on though. It takes so much time to set that kind of stuff up. Could just change the CE or something. That one page just not actually slotted really fucks me up. Um, this is kind of okay because it's leveled to chunk. This has Buster up, but split stat. This just doesn't do much for Mori. What does this one do? No idea. It's quick. I mean, this is all right, I suppose. Definitely lowers our damage, but... Look how long this takes, man. Loading, 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 loading. Anything in the Mana Prism shop right now? Kind of. Let's see if Mori can get 108 here. I kind of doubt it. Not that much XP. I'm here to tell you Dragon's Dogma in 24 hours. Now to back to Lurk. Yeah, I heard it was around there. I'm pretty excited for that. We get so little time with uh, OC2 though. Eh, we'll see. I don't think that's enough XP, but... If I get a uh, great success or super success, we'll get it, I think. On the five star ones. Last chance. Oh shit. That's probably enough chat. How about that? Just get lucky. That's so big when 20 of the five star ones all get the bonus. All these stats though are just going into the fact that my CE is not actually leveled. It's not even fully making up for that, actually. Not even close. How many coins do I got? 180. I think that's enough. Kind of in a rough spot on Grails, though. But, uh, we're getting there. I probably need to re-slot them. It doesn't update levels, generally. It looks like Mori is going to be our second 120, though. And then if they don't add the Green Knight or anything crazy like that, it's probably going to be Billy. If I can get the damn coins. And then, uh, I don't know after that. That's tough. I wouldn't mind having a 120 of VC Braun, honestly. It's just it's so bad for him. Like, holy fuck, he's bad at 120. Fuck it. So chat, that Dea emote reminds me, I gotta ask, has Genshin buffed Dea? Any, uh, any of that? LOL. I 
Didn't think so. Well, we have a quick card. That's not the best. Do I want to crit with that? Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, they don't seem to buff much over there. Are they still trying to design con- Really? Are they still trying to design content in a way to fuck over Benny? I love how the deck shuffled where I get no Mori cards. That's great. Yes, that's so fucked up, dude. It's because they want people to roll on more characters. That's the whole thing. Chat, why doesn't that game just have like dungeons, like an MMO that you can do with other players for fun and, and loot and stuff? And like you have a boss at the end of the of the of the of the dungeon that drops like the trinkets and shit everyone's farming all the time. Like why 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 can't why can't they do that? Like why why can't why can't they be more like relink, right? Holy fuck, though. I was so uninterested in that new boss in Relink, dude. I have not played that again. Like, I really don't need MMO plus, like, Elden Ring. <laughs> I really don't need that in my life. I don't want to taunt here. I want to taunt next turn, but the game might make me. We'll see. Like, taunting next turn is just so much better. I just failed a 90% crit. Game, you, you're making me mad here. If I, I, this is why Poster Girl's good, man. You just put it on one of the casters and there you go. If she crits, there's no way she has a 90% crit there with the crit down. Dude, I just want to taunt next turn. It's so much smoother. It's either that or you get a buster card on turn one, either way. Um... This is cheating, but I should have cast this anyway. I don't even know why I didn't. You know, buff removal would be nice here. I might need to just put Leonidas in the front. Why are you always doing that? Like it's always a crit. It's always more. And then you do. Then you look at that. Look at that. No damage. Absolutely no damage. Okay, game. All right. Just gonna put Leonidas in the front. Who summons? Who summons VR Mash? Chat. I was so angry at FGO the last video I made. Um. Because I wanted VR Mash for the the challenge quests that I made a video for, because I didn't want to summon anything like super impactful, but Mash like VR Mash was kind of good there. And no matter what I did, the game would would not update that my alt account had VR Mash up and not regular Mash. It has now. Like a week later, it finally fixed it, but it would just put up regular Mash over and over and over. And it was at the point where I'm like, can you not slot her? But then other people had her slotted, but she was scuffed as fuck. And I checked, I undid it and redid it. I, I put up the pages, redid the pages. I checked, I, I was doing this for like an hour and a half. And it just would not let me summon my VR mash. 
I can't run. I don't even remember what I did. I either summoned someone else's or uh, I have to check the video. Maybe I just used regular mash. But I was so fucking annoyed. Let's see. What did I do for that video? Oh, I guess technically the last video I put up was Vandictus, but that's last F go video. Excuse me. Um, I I just used regular mash, so I, I just gave in. Double green, by the way. Um, okay, we're just gonna do this, and then uh, maybe star bomb. I have such a hard time finding the other star bombs. There's so many of them. See, there's the Martha one, there's the Calamity Jane one. There we go, that'll do. Yeah, we're really not getting good uh, Mori hands. Surely he's not gonna get one turned here. Well, Lee's students was completely different. It was Lee that was like crazy RNG with Mori. Man, I will say though, these Mori hands have been very bad. Shockingly so. Next turn is probably a better time to do the first skill here. Oh yeah, if I don't have Chin out though, we don't get the giant ass crit buff. There's all of our damn cards. Do I use this or do I wait? It's gonna mess up Chin. We've got attack, a triple attack, art up, buster up. I think we're like just shy. Like this is overkill. Fuck it. I hate doing that because that's the only one that can get through the first skill, but uh, I don't think I have another way here. Damn it. Ugh. This is because Chin's in the back. And see, now if I NP, she's only at 30k. Ugh, that blows. And the star bomb's wasted too. Unfortunate. What the fuck game? How? Just how? No, I like how the entire deck had no buster card, right? Like all three of them, no buster card. And then I don't crit. That's why I didn't, like, if anyone had a buster card, it doesn't need to be Mori. The 50% damage up would have been enough to break without critting. This is so shit. It's because the boss just does slightly too much damage, so I keep having to, like, it, it, the whole thing is because I, I need to taunt on turn one, but like there's no value on turn one. That's like the whole problem. Like I'd probably still win that one because um, like our back row can handle it. We had like taunts forever at that point, but that was just so unsatisfying getting that little value. 
Maybe you cut Mozart. I find Mozart's really only good if you get a good opening hand or you don't need to taunt on turn one. And the reason why you don't, like, if you have Mozart, you don't want to taunt on turn one is, is so you can guarantee... Like, if you don't have a good hand on or turn one, you probably have a good turn two or three. So, like, you need the time. If you taunt on turn one and, like, Mozart doesn't die or Mozart doesn't have a reason to use his skills yet and he does die, then you're just, like, why didn't you just bring George or something instead? Hmm. Oh my god, this game is so frustrating, dude. It's like you try to summon yourself and like in five minutes it's like, nope. Could do that. The problem with this is uh you're probably not gonna get value out of the art up. I didn't even know there were free rolls in Grand Blue Fantasy. I was not aware of this. And then now I get double fucking Buster. All oh, this game. Seventy ninety. So nice to save these stars. <sighs> we are statistically favored. Nah, I'd crit. Let's let's find out. Like we're we're statistically favored here. Unfortunate. If I did his first skill, we would have, but uh, I was trying to save it. Now watch us just go a million turns with not uh, not being able to break. We'll see. Oh my god, that sucks. Oh, so Leonidas is being kind of too tanky here. <laughs> what I do? Wait, what happened? Well, I can just NP again here. No stars, unfortunately. By the way, Leo is so good because... Like, imagine if this was Mash, he wouldn't really even have taken damage. And then if you have a turn where you don't loop within the time frame, you do the first skill. Like, he can just... You don't necessarily kill really fast, but like... He kind of just guarantees that you're safe for quite a while. And again, especially with Mash or something. Just uh, waiting on Mozart here any day now. This is a much better setup though, using Leonidas and uh, Chin at the start. It removes a lot of the RNG. It doesn't necessarily get the peak value, but it's way likelier to like sync things up the way you want. Ugh, so close on this. So next turn we get all the damage again.
Man, do I have to taunt Mozart when I still have the 50 fucking stars? Oh, that's not a great feeling. Look at all the damage next turn, man! Like, if I, if I keep the- oh, you know what? Fuck it. Maybe he'll live. That's, this is actually a terrible decision because now I won't have St. George to make sure uh, Mori's safe. But I, I want the, the next turn like so bad. Fuck, I shouldn't have art upped because I actually don't think it's worth doing the art card here now that I think about it. Doesn't have the crit. Like it's way, it's got the art up and the art resist down, but. You know, maybe I should have saved this for next turn. Because that we have so much more buster up next turn. Although that's pretty good. If that hand was next turn, we would have won right there. Because he's only got like a quick and an art card left. This is so useless. <laughs> this is so useless. Oh, we fucked up chat. I shouldn't, I should not have taunted. Uh, I knew when I did it, it was kind of a bad idea. It was like, we, just, we have all the buffs now, but we don't have any cards. Is this how it feels to be baldy? Could have at least saved the guts, but I didn't even do that. Well, we got a quick crit, boys. Baldi is worse, absolutely. Damn, he almost got it there, man. If we had an art card or a buster card, we would have killed there. We had an art card left. We did not have a buster. She's just mad. Just a sore loser. Honestly, I'd redo it, but it's getting late, so I should probably- Oh, guys, it's a coup solo! Easy. Actually, it's a St. George solo. Look at all these defense buffs he's got, and he's gonna NP and get another one. He'd probably take zero damage this turn. Got him. Huh, I didn't I didn't realize Yushi was a dragon, but that's pretty irrefutable evidence right there. Chat Ascalon better be in Dragon's Dogma too. That was so awesome. Uh, I could be St. George and kill a dragon and get Ascalon. It's so great. That better stay in. Do we know if there's like armor die or anything in uh, Dogma 2? Anything, anything like that? I haven't watched any of the interviews or trailers or any of that shit. So I don't, I don't know any stuff like that. I wonder if Jalter could solo that stage because that'd be an okay first video to show off some stuff. He's so lame. So does nobody know as as Dogma not like talked about like armor customization or anything like that? I would assume no, because games just can't be bothered most of the time. More hands. Didn't we just do this? Let's 
god, he's lame. Oh my god. Normally not one to hate on Hassan's, but man... That design is not it. Are we just fighting a generic hand right now? It's kind of dumb. We fought so many of these. Man, where's Lobo at? Black Grail, huh? They're familiars. Whoever's making them is probably just keep sending them after us. Lol. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing it's the count guy. There's three of them here. So close to being able to NP there. If I brought a different setup, I could do it like Shakespeare. Quick chat, who knows the name of this song? Who's gonna get it? Any gamers in here? Meteor head? Yep, that was the first guess too, Jesus. Or meteor herd, excuse me. I think meteor head is like Tager's theme from Blaze Bloom. I still can't NP. That's great. Um. Hmm. I mean, who needs to NP when you can just punch it really hard? I don't really need the upgrade of this. You know, I could give her a taunt, but. The quick card's probably enough. Let's see that damage. Jesus Christ, man. That is with pretty minimal buffs here. Guys, Ort's here. See? It's all the same. Yeah, she's, uh, she's pretty good, though. Like, my god. Got good survivability too while having good damage. I wish the CGI here was better. Also, why didn't they just draw it? Like, they literally show her from two angles and then the arm moves. So you'd have to draw her like three times tops and then maybe draw the arm, you know, a few times. But like what the what, literally that's not that big of a deal. Why don't you just fuck like it looks so much better Especially the flame effects they look a million times better when they're drawn And she is kind of Ort's kid. It's kind of whack. She's technically Ort's type So it's like a type of a type. I don't, I don't know how we got to this point Next AU predictions, um, they're probably not going to do any more for a really long time. That's my prediction. I, ho I hope to God I'm wrong and we get like Leonidas or something. But um, I don't know, man. I uh, I think they may have just, just done this because Dolther is so popular. And if they were planning on using her here anyway, they're like, okay, we have to do it now. But um, I, I do think Leonidas would be kind of likely soon-ish, maybe not next, if they did do more. Because he is popular, he's obviously owed one, and they haven't used him in a story in a long time. So, like, an upcoming event, if Leonidas is in it, that would be very unsurprising. So, you know, it could be that.
Chat, it's really hard for me to talk about some things I want to talk about right now without spoiling Fate Strange fake things. It's really, uh, unfortunate. This is the, um, main theme of Soul Worker. And I had so much fun playing that game. I've heard they've power crept the shit out of it now, and it's a lot, like, easier and more boring now, which that's really unfortunate. Yeah, it's still around. Just dumbed down a lot, unfortunately. That game should have been more like Relink, in my opinion. Instead of having a full team, though, you know, you just play by yourself, and then you can have the co-op, though. But, um... I think that game would have been better as a, a normal single-player game that has co-op, as opposed to trying to make it like a pseudo-MMO. I think that was a mistake. The PE teacher, Bodica. I want to at least see who the next trial is. Been streaming, though, for like six hours. So for those that are new here, essentially there's a singularity in your head, in, in the main character's head, because that makes sense. And it's like set right before they went to Chaldea. So they're in school. Like set in 2015. And then a lot of the characters like in your memory are, being, are replaced by servants, of course. And then somehow, uh, most of them like don't have their memories, but then somehow you get Jalter and Tonio and a few of the other ones that they're, they're like taking over their NPC selves and are now like undercover. And then there's like these seven trials you have to do at night because it's Persona. And then the Count's maybe here. The first uh, trial was Brotomart's mom. Not really sure what uh, is up next here, though. I think it's a singularity in your brain. Because that makes sense. I don't know if it's the, their past. They don't know where the house was. Had S. Ricky. Okay. Huh. Okay, then why is it in your head then? Now I'm just confused. So it's actual Brito Mart? Yeah, yeah. You never see her face, though. She's in the armor the entire time. She's never voice acted, I don't think, and uh, you never see inside the armor. I mean, I don't, I don't see why we would fight Edmund because of the prison tower. Now, we might fight him, but I don't think that has anything to do with it. I mean, he's been on our side this entire time, but they might do some, like, you know, nonsense. Are we still not gonna? We could show him off again. We only used him once, but... Oh my god, he's so lame! Also, his animations are pretty shit. Um, we could show off Jolter. Find a better one than that if I can here. I guess I can use mine, but I'm sure, um... Lost has a better one than mine, but I think Lost is still at work. I don't even need to change the team. I'm glad Jolter got an animation update. When her character is actually being used seriously, which is kind of debatable right now, uh, she's a decent enough character. Not like my favorites or anything, but she's decently cool. Okay, the playlist is super repeating itself. Oh, here's a good one. A wonderful fight, Bodica, at some point. Oh, shit. Did we just bring in our Bodica? Is that what that was? Only saw her for like a second there and she was all shadowy. Wait, are they gonna do something with Avenger Bodica? They're totally gonna make it lame though. 
They're not gonna like actually add her as a new three star or four star or anything. I think they're gonna at least like hint at that, at the fact that Bodica can be an Avenger. But I, I don't think they're gonna actually, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't think they're gonna do anything major right now. We'll see. I, I think these animation updates mean we're not gonna get a lot of new characters right now. Because FGO can't be bothered to add content. Because he showed like shadowy face Bodica there for a second. Wait, is Jolter a magical girl? Technically. Going from school uniform to, you know, combat drip. We all are. I don't know what that. Oh, look, it's Avenger Bodica. Chat, they just, and she made us all Roman. They just can't. They just, they're just, why, why not just add three star Avenger Bodica right now? Right? Like, why not? That'd, that'd have been awesome. Like, that'd make this singularity so much more hype. But they're like, nope, Shadow Rider Bodica, but we'll say it's Avenger. Like, oh my god, dude. But, uh, hey, yeah, we're all Roman, though. I mean, we already were, but, uh... I like how it's not removable. All right, let's see here. I wonder if you need to kill the hands or not. I probably should have brought actual NP gain. Tune A right there. I mean, it shouldn't be a problem to do both, right? Having Avenger Bodica and Hassan. It's like, they used to add a decent amount of characters and uh, still do animation updates and all that. But here recently, they just can't keep up with things. Maybe a little early for this, but... 50%. Fuck it. I kind of want to throw stuff out early so they come back off cooldown. And I, I feel like I'm not going to get my NP for a minute because I forgot to get starting NP. It's only one buster card. Well, maybe we only need the one. What can she do here? I think our stage one, they kind of want to have um, a Lancer Jolter vibe is kind of why they changed it. I mean, it still has the red at the bottom. It's just, um, it's harder to see because of like the, sh the lighting. Like this is actually red. You just can't see it very well. But just like the way all of our sprites are holding this, they're kind of making it more Lancer-y with that. Which is probably better, honestly. It looked really stupid before. Almost broke with just that one Buster card. God damn. I couldn't murder one of the hands, but probably no need. I really do like that attack, though. That's pretty cool. Ninety-nine. God damn it, game. That's kind of a problem because um. He can't be attacked here. Well, my buffs though. Oh, I thought I thought I'd cast this. I should have cast it because uh, Leonidas could have used it. Whoops. Ninety percent. Did she just say Master Chan? The fuck is wrong with this lady? Oh, 
One thing if you're the uh, female MC, but if you're male MC, that's kind of that's kind of messed up. Okay. Um. Just have a attack buff. Oh, she's almost dead though. Yeah, Jolter's chunking, and I, I'm not even like setting this up very optimally. Yeah, I know guys can be called Chan sometimes, but generally you don't do that. Yeah, no respect. Uh, I wonder if we can keep Leonidas alive here. Some of these hands, though, have been, uh, kind of blah. Oh, yeah, and the boss has the damage resist all the time. Did not save her, though. Okay, you do indeed need to kill the hands. Well, one of them should die here. Chat, why was Plants vs. Zombies 1 such a good game? Like, what the hell, man? That was one of the many times I, I just realized that games, or at least mainstream games, are getting worse. Now, there's a lot of great games, Dragon's Dogma 2, you know, Elden Ring. A lot of indie games are incredible, so incredible. But, like, there's just a type of, like... Because a lot of people say it's nostalgia, right? But there are so many times I've gone back and played a, an oldie video game that I did not play back in the day. So I've no nostalgia for. And it's just better. Like, I, I can think of so many examples like that where I've gone back and played, like, old video games and they're just so much more creative. I've noticed this big time. When you play older video games, like, maybe GameCube era and earlier, the older video games are a lot more likely to just try very different things and make almost unique game experiences tailored to that specific game, where modern games take a genre and then build a game around that genre. They do that all of the fucking time. Um, and so there's just a lot of creativity, I find, in older games. Now there's a lot of old games that are, that are fucking terrible. Let's, let's not kid ourselves here. Um, but they're just, there's a lot of like game design that literally doesn't exist in modern video games, even indie games. Like they're just gone. Um, and yeah, I can just think of a lot of examples like that. And it makes me sad. That being said, there's a lot of good modern games too. And like, there's so much stuff coming out that I'm looking forward to. I mean, EDF for God's sake. I feel like a lot of old devs actually liked games. So they tried to make a game people would want to play. Yeah, I do agree. It's very corporate now, right? The, the industry wasn't really developed and most people that were doing it were doing it out of passion. Chat, this is a hand. Why couldn't I have this earlier? Why is the enemy so weak now? And look, I can guarantee crit and everything. Are you kidding me? I have such power here and nothing to use it on. Chat, can you use Romulus here? Oh my god, that needs to be the video. Oh my god, you know, when I, when I do this for a video, I'm, I have to use Romulus here. Because I bet you, you can, these count as Romans who he's stronger. <laughs> I bet you that's a thing. Oh my god, I have to test that. But anyway, yeah, when the industry wasn't so corporate and so established and so profitable, I think uh, a lot of people were just in it for pure passion and they were just, there wasn't so many like established tropes and stuff. So people were trying like harder to be creative. We're, uh, yeah, we're kind of in a rut right now, but there are good games. I think double A games or like A list games, you want to call them, are, are actually doing really well right now. You know, stuff like EDF and like Hell Divers. Um, there's a lot of really cool shit like that getting made. I think we might actually be on the like the cusp of like a video game renaissance. I think people are actually starting to get really sick of the AAA bullshit and just how bad it is. Um, and you're starting to see games like Pal World that are, are not AAA do really well. Um, and it, I think that, that it tells AAA that they need to be more creative and it also makes it easier for other devs to just succeed. So yeah, I, I think we have a lot of good shit coming. I hope so anyway. All right, well, uh, we have massive damage here that is going to go into the void. Literally dead from just the buster. Look at, look at these massive art cards. 
Oh, the sadness. Why couldn't that enemy have been tougher? Uh, I think the reason Jolter's NP matches the Ascensions is because they have to because she's an older character that her NP was like that before, so they couldn't get away with always putting her in stage 3 or something. But if she was made from ground up today, if we had never seen or heard of Jolter until this singularity, uh, she probably would just be in stage 3 all the time, like um, Antoinette. I, I really think so. I really do think so. she'd be like Antoinette right now. Is this like our Bodica that's been warped? Like we tried to have her take over the NPC and she got fucked up because the Avenger theme or something? That would make sense. Either that or it's just Avenger Bodica. And they're just being lazy. How did his mask just like shift like that? Like, how's that work? Really is lame they didn't add Avenger Bodica here. That'd be really nice. I assume there is no three star because chat would have like spoiled that on Discord if there was. I'm not expecting any new servants other than what we see here. I mean, maybe one for like the main antagonist or something. There's, yeah, there probably is at least one more, but uh, I'm not expecting like a random three star or anything. Yeah, sure, of course there's at least one more, maybe two more, but for, like the antagonist, the major antagonist. Did OC1 have two banners? I think it did. Wasn't Kale second banner? Yeah, I do suspect there to be a second banner, but it's probably whatever antagonists. And I guess Bodica's an antagonist there, but not major, so. Yeah, I expect it to be whatever major antagonists are here. And then they'll probably have a side banner with Jolter or something. I'd be surprised if they didn't write up Jolter. It doesn't even make sense to not do it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'd be, love to be wrong, and there is a three star, but I just the way the story is, it's if they if they were gonna do something like that, it probably would have been Avenger Bodica there, right? And they're not doing it, so who knows? We'll see. I got five summon tickets, Shirley Shoulders there. <laughs> yeah, good luck. You never know. Yeah, you fought Medusa and stuff. And I think you used her on A stage or something like that, but she wasn't playable until later. So did they literally have to ask Ricky Boy where our houses are? Like, oh, uh, where do I live? I don't think this is the count. Edmund was saying it's like someone else earlier. Although maybe it's like, maybe it's an alter ego thing and there's like gonna be a, you know, Count of Monte Cristo. I mean, that'd be kind of cool, but I'd rather it be a separate character. It would be nice if they would add the County Monte Cristo design in though. Hey friend, where the fuck do, it, do any of us live? Uh oh. Did Da Vinci get God again? 
Any Kodamine around? That'd be great. Who done it? Me. This is such a strange story. So if this is supposed to be traumatizing, I don't really see why it would be because she's already dead and we already knew that. And she played basically no role in this story whatsoever. So kind of hard to care here. What of the other Da Vinci? Kodamine cameo. Rip. I'm gonna guess somehow this doesn't actually kill Da Vinci though, because uh, they're, they're just not gonna do it that way. This music right now. Finally. <laughs> I don't like Kid Da Vinci at all, dude. Oh shit. Well, now you know it's a fake out. There's just 0% chance MASH is going to die in OC2. Like, this couldn't be a, a bigger indicator that this isn't gonna matter at all. Like, this just instantly makes it not matter. And my playlist just does not want to mix things up. Why was MASH in our house, anyway? So, was that the Bleached Earth? Got purple socks, what a nerd. What's all this? Master mental breakdown. Very fitting music. Is, is Master gonna go Avenger mode? Game. Hello. And then Ricky Boy's the killer. Was Bodica the second trial chat? Because, uh, yeah, they haven't really done anything for this entire day, trial-wise. So we got police here, all right. Any NPC designs here? I'm guessing no. We're going to jail for pruning all these lost belts. Eyeless NPCs. I'm not sure they're even gonna do that. We'll see. A 
That's a lot of dots. Chat, do not let any of this distract you from the fact that this is not how to use the color red over here. Also, I just realized you can't see my mouse. This is not how to use the color red over here. This is fine. But this fucking purple, black, and then especially the white, and then red. Like, get this fucking red out of here, dude. Make the red, black, white, or purple, and it's better. Like, look at, look at, look at this shit. Fucking purple, white, red, and then purple. Like, like, fuck off. Like, he looks so much better. Infinitely better use of red. Because it's way more black, right? And it's like black and just a tiny bit of white and then red. So much better. Edmund looking pretty creepy right now. me nothing. I find a lot of game designs like to just slap red on things that are already like got a lot of colors already. Not great. The master's face? Wait, what? <laughs> oh shit. Okay, we're fighting every class ever here. Hmm. That's not bad. You know what? There we go. Animation update any day now. Trial time now. A lot later at night than the previous one. Well, that means whoever murdered everybody wasn't uh, this trial, I suppose. Um. That was Nito Chris. I can't say I was expecting that. Especially considering how the just used during the main story. Kinda odd. Green 2. Oh, what a name. It's so whack that Jolter's animation update, I think the quick card, you know, it was an art card? I think it was an art card. Whatever, it was the NP for Ruler Jolter before. It was pretty whack. Well, I guess Lost Belt 7 was a long time ago, IRL time. But uh, in terms of the amount of main stories, it was very recent. So I guess she's the second trial. I guess she is kind of popular, so they want to give her more screen time already. But I don't know, these trial villains don't get a lot of screen time, so... All 
That's a new sprite, I think. What the hell? So, uh, do we know what her shtick is here? Because I'm assuming she's not normal. Like, maybe it's more Anubis than normal or, or something like that. Pretty sure this is just about Avengers. There's been other classes in it, but the Singularity is about Avengers. Which is weird because they only have four stories. So if they're doing so few classes at a time, I don't really get how this is going to work. Maybe it'll turn into also rulers later. Your pass where I read, so I don't know. Animation update for Skeleton. Well. Yeah, it's way more Avenger focused than OC1 was Alter Ego focused, for sure. Like Avengers everywhere. But it's like they have four stories, and there's more than four extra classes, so I'm kind of confused. Reskinned of the uh, old school ghost, I see. The big boy crit here. Two bus drops. It's actually not that big, but damn. I wonder how big this damage resist is. Maybe I get a lucky crit here. Nice. Ask and you shall receive. Tender and Moon Cancer won't really matter to this. They still need to add if well, I mean maybe they can get it done, we'll see. I'm surprised this isn't Ruler and Avenger though. Man, I want my NP gain buff, but I don't want to override my three turn taunt. I mean, we see BB all of the time, my god. Even if it's not main story, they'll just put her in an event. She's been, Jesus Christ, she's been used so much. I always like people complaining about Mordred getting used too much when she barely ever gets used for anything serious and then BB is just fucking everywhere. So silly. a while to kill these bloody ghosts. Deck shuffles have been kind of bad and I don't want to NP. Come on, Darius. Impress me here. Get that overkill. No, no, no overkill. At all. Okay, well, it was still enough. His NP gain is actually pretty good with golden roll up. It's just only one art card. Oh. Well, there's no way you actually kill her here. I doubt this is the real fight. Debuff I can't get rid of. Very fun. She's not debuff immune though. Got 
Shame I don't have a Buster card here. Challenge you to a tool. Yeah. Don't rip the minions. It actually might be bad to kill those. Might give her more actions per turn. And if she does way more damage than them. There's been several fights like that. Um. Yeah, that, that was a good boss fight. Well, you you can break that health bar. Oh, game. Remember Lobo in Epic of Remnant number one, where the fights with him before the definitive fight were actual boss fights still? Like, why, why, why can't we have that? Okay, Chad, I should probably wrap up. It's been six fucking hours. At least now we see the next trial. But, um... I may not be able to stream FGO tomorrow because I think it depends. Depends on if, I, if I'm able to get the work done tomorrow or not. It's kind of weather dependent. So if the weather is shit, I'll just stream FGO until Dragon's Dogma comes out. But if the weather is decent, I need to get some shit done. Um, so we may not have an FGO stream tomorrow. We might go straight into Dragon's Dogma. We'll just see. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. But yeah, really hyper Dragon's Dogma. I, I, I love FGO and everything, but uh, definitely prioritizing Dogma on this one. I mean, we can come back. Wow. Oh, it's because it's my ult account. It hasn't, like, done any of this stuff. Anyways, boys, that was a good time. I am glad to see the animation updates, so that's uh, at least something. But uh, I will definitely see you all tomorrow, at least for Dragon's Dogma. That is definitely happening. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Let me see who we can raid here. Chat, where's Perseus at? Got Andromeda. Um, we'll raid Cadroth here. So they're doing NA stuff. I'll just raid Cairo, fuck it. Keep it simple. Alright boys, I will see you guys tomorrow. And uh, yeah, take care.